an electrifying atmosphere. Great new video board here. Man, does it pump out some sound. And we are set for the kickoff. Will Shipley standing back at the goal line here for Clemson. And Buck Buchanan to kick off for La Tech. And we underway. Shipley, of course, is the number one back. And this will start out at the 25-yard line. DJ Uyunglele, the quarterback. And that's been a difficult road for Big Sicko, Tim. Probably would have been for any quarterback following Trevor Lawrence, he himself, highlighting those expectations with so much early success. But it's been a better start to this season than last season. And he was described as being in a good place. The coaching staff thrilled with where he is compared to where he was a year ago. Yeah, they say his confidence is soaring right now. There is no doubt it is his team. He's going to roll immediately, looking to throw and looking for a double pass here. Spector instead is going to keep and run it. And straight ahead for the gain of 15 yards. Thought about throwing it a second time there. And dragged down eventually by Joseph Mesa, but a first down. Cool way to start the game. Throwback screen to Spector, and they do a nice job of setting it up. And always good to get that type of start in a football game. Quickly out to Ngata. Ngata on the near sideline. Joseph Ngata fascinating because of all the talent he has and his size. He looks like a Sunday afternoon wide receiver. Dave, he no doubt looks like a Sunday afternoon wide receiver. Injury bug has been the big problem for Ngata. If he can stay on the field, they believe he is a game breaker. He's been unable to do that for the last couple of years. And a quarterback will keep it. DJ off to the races and picks up a big first down and a gain of 19 on that scamper before Brooks finally dragged him down. They're going with his own read here. Basically, he's going to come this way. He's going to read the defensive end. He squeezes down. He's going to end up keeping the football, which is what he does. Get an escort blocker with Allen coming across the tight end. And a good job of Ngata, who we just mentioned, blocking down the field. New offensive coordinator for the Tigers, Brandon Streeter, first year. Former Clemson quarterback in his own right. Uyunglele looking downfield. He's going to loft this one. And incomplete. That was intended for his best buddy, Bo Collins. Good coverage there by Miles Brooks, the corner. Now DJ was solid against Furman last week, Tim. 21 for 27. Two touchdowns. The Tigers opened with five consecutive scoring drives. They're going to do the same thing here against La Tech tonight. Shipley in the backfield. Spectre in motion. Shipley straight on. Straight on. Busts a couple of tackles and picks up a first down. Will Shipley for 20. Shot out of a cannon. Roberts with the tackle. You know, good job of the guys up front. Jordan McFadden pulling up into the hole, as is Davis Allen. Well blocked, and Shipley nearly breaks it. First down and 10 for the Tigers. On play action, going to put it in the air, and it's going to be incomplete, and no flags thrown. That was intended for E.J. Williams. And again, good coverage by the corner, Brooks. And Dave, those are the types of plays we've seen Clemson make in the past. Defense wants to be aggressive, play man-to-man -man coverage without any help. The receiver and quarterback need to find a way to connect. Receiver's got to let the, the, the quarterback have room, and then the quarterback's got to give the receiver a chance to get his hands on the football. Second down, 10. Initial scoring drive tonight for the Tigers. And Shipley again straight on. And will get himself a couple of hard-earned yards there. He's going to pick up six on that carry. So third down and four here for the Tigers. And with the movement they've gotten in the run game so far, I, I think even on third and four, running the football is still in play, even in this area of the field for Clemson. Going to put Allen, the tight end, and set him up on the right side. Uyunglele looking, firing, got the tight end, and a completed pass. Got that down to the five-yard line. Davis Allen with the grab there. Cole took his legs out from under him. Picks up only two. Yeah, and Clemson's trying to get a little pick play. You, you know, get Joseph Ngata trying to basically become a picker for 
Jaden Cole, and as Davis Allen breaks out, Cole does a good job of just fighting through it and then making the open field tackle. The fans don't love the idea that they're settling for a field goal, but it's probably the right decision. So they'll bring on BT Potter. And the next field goal he makes passes Aaron Hunt for fifth place all time on a Clemson list. This will be from 22, so a chip shot. And he will drill that one for three. So the crowd didn't love it, but the Tigers are on the board here. They strike right away on their first drive. Well, I'm not 100% sold yet. Okay, have you considered- It's fine, Flo, she's not interested. I get it, not everyone wants to save money. What's she doing? I don't know. Renters and homeowners can bundle and save. For what? A trip to Bora Bora? Bora Boring. <laughs> okay, you know what? I'm in. She's all yours. Want some tacos? Nah, I'm not really in the mood. Yeah, you're right, so messy. All the napkins, those different toppings. Actually, I'm in. Yeah, you are. Just between us, you know what's better than mopping? Anything. At the end of a long day, it's the last thing I want to do. Ugh. Well, I switched to Swiffer WetJet, and it's awesome. It's an all-in-one, so it's ready to go when I am. The cleaning solution actually breaks down dirt and grime, and the pad absorbs it deep inside, so it prevents streaks and haze better than my old mop. Plus, it's safe to use on all my floors, even wood. Glad I got that off my chest. <laughs> and the day off my floor. Try WetJet with a money-back guarantee. Sundays at 7 on ESPN. Nine plays, they drive 70 yards in just over three minutes and punch in the field goal and grab the 3-0 lead here against La Tech. Dave O'Brien alongside Tim Hasselbeck and Dabo with his quarterback and company after that first drive. Yeah, and even though they settled for a field goal, you saw some good things. You know, the quarterback was comfortable, had a nice run. Obviously, got great movement up front, a couple good runs for Will Shipley, and so well, they didn't come away with a score. Some good takeaways for Clemson on that original drive. So the Bulldogs about to get their first touch. They're one and one. They lost their opener at Missouri, 52-24. Bounce back to whip Stephen F. Austin, 52-17. Allen's going to take it out. Oh, he took a pop. So he paid for that just across that 15-yard line and ran it back for 15. And so the quarterback is a tall one. That is Parker McNeil. Flag down here on the play. Oh, that massive hit we saw a moment ago. Flag drop. Big deal out of Austin, Texas. Texas Tech transfer. Before that, he played at Troy. They're going to play a couple of quarterbacks, but it's his team. He's a senior. So far this season, he's thrown five touchdown passes, and Tim, they like to go fast. They do like to go fast, and they feel like McNeil's done a better job protecting the football. It's one of the reasons we're seeing him first. They'll work from the shotgun almost exclusively. It's going to be dumped out to Smoke Harris, his top receiver. Only 5'7", but 15 career touchdown receptions. He's a really good player, and they will move him around. You saw him line up in the slot there. Now he's moving to the other side of the formation. 
will be the most inside receiver to a trip. So they're moving around because they want to get him the football. Are you expecting to see a lot of screen plays from Louisiana Tech? Because Clemson's been seeing a lot of those. They got beat by a bunch against Furman. Second down and six. He'll be able to fire over the middle short and complete again. That'll pick up just three yards again. It's Smoke Harris, preseason all-conference USA. Jeremiah Trotter with his first stop. Yeah, and you see what they want to do with Harris is you know, kind of get him to you know, kind of stretch the field, find those zones to sit down, and then basically hope that you can eventually hit something in behind it. Well, the Tigers have won 35 consecutive games at Memorial Stadium, one of the longest home winning streaks in FBS history. Heavy favorite to add to that here tonight. And the first important play tonight for the Bulldogs, third down and three. And McNeil out of the gun to put it in the air. And he gets it to that side. And Trey Harris will pick up the first down. He caught five for a touchdown last week. He caught a touchdown and the five receptions. He'll pick up nine. Yeah, and it's just a nice job of running an out route and then good timing by Parker McNeil with the ball right to the face mask of Trey Harris. You know, the receivers for Louisiana Tech, they can run. You know, they, they got good speed, and so I do think it's a challenging matchup if the guys up front for Louisiana Tech can hold up. Early first down. McNeil to throw again, and it's tipped. And incomplete. Head coach for La Tech is Sonny Cumbie in his first year. 42 years old. He was a West Texas guy who walked on to Texas Tech and led the nation with over 4,700 passing yards in 2004. He's a really good passer, and you can tell by the way he designs offense and calls plays that he has got a good feel just for the passing game in general. That's why you see guys like Smoke Harris be able to have games where they touch the ball as often as they do and you know, move them around and does a nice job with it. That's his center down, Abraham Delphin. So he's hurt and needing some assistance to walk off the 6-1 senior. And out he comes. And listen, that's not a good sign because I think the biggest mismatch in this football game is the defensive line for Clemson going against the offensive line for Louisiana Tech. And Delphin has the most experience out of anybody in that group. And so now you start getting down the line, it could become a bigger problem than it maybe already was going to be. Ray Kelly... 6-1, about 300, backing him up. He's the new center. Second down, 10 here. McNeil with a little bit of time. Another short pass incomplete. And he hits Smoke Harris, his favorite target. And their best offensive player, probably aside from Marquise Crosby, the running back. This will gain four. Yeah, you can just see, you know, the plan already with, with Harris. Uh, you know, try to... Just fine when they're playing zone coverage, try to find the soft spots and that. The thing you have to be careful of is the speed at the linebacker level for Clemson with Trenton Simpson and Barrett Carter, their ability to react to the football. Harris in motion. They wind up with three wideouts on the right. McGill again looking to throw this one. Fires it up there, tipped and incomplete. Clemson with some pressure. Praise O'Corey, the man he was trying to hit, the wide receiver. Uh, pretty good pressure there by Kevin Swint. Yeah, and coming off the right side, basically right into the lap of Parker McNeil, and you see why this football ends up being high. Just look at the bull rush, and that's what I'm talking about in terms of, you know, the, just the athletic mismatch that you're dealing with. Peyton Page just drives Isaac Ellis back into the lap of Parker McNeil, not able to finish the throw. Man, what a finish in that one. Absolutely incredible. Wake Forest hanging on. Failed two-pointer. Three to nothing here. Clemson has the lead. And Dave O'Brien with Tim Hasselbeck along with Kelsey Riggs. Marching 70 yards. The Tigers did on the first drive, Tim. And knocked in three. Uyunglele. Will hand off here. 
And a running play by Shipley. Will pick up six yards. And then the Tigers forcing that punt. Now, DJ, at this point, outside of Clemson, there seems to be a quarterback controversy with Cade Klubnick, the very gifted freshman. Everyone thinks pushing for playing time. Tim, that's really not happening. And it's not what we heard. I mean, it basically was described as this is DJ's team. This is his team, and he's in a good place. And the coaching staff and the players are really responding well to him, and he's off to a good start this season. And running the football here as well on the carry. Big Cinco, not as big this year. He slimmed down by about 25 pounds. He'll gain 13 here. And it's another time, another zone read. They ran one earlier on the first drive, had a nice pickup, do it once again, a little bit different in terms of how they block it. But, you know, you mentioned the weight loss. I, I do think that he's moving a little bit better, and I think it probably just helps him throughout the game, especially as he's trying to become a more accurate passer. The young delay to put it in the air. He'll fire this one and complete here on the near sideline. That one caught by Bo Collins, his high school teammate from way back at St. John Bosco Prep in L.A. And, and that's a really nice throw by DJ because you, know, you can tell he trusts Collins, but changing the ball speed and trajectory. You know, not everything has to be a fastball. We know he has a big arm. That's a nice touch there. On play action, plenty of time. Great protection. Throwing long and a diving catch on that far sideline. A 41-yard toss there to Engada. Take a look at this grab. It's a great throw by DJ. Nice, accurate ball. And then Joseph Engada, who Davey said it earlier, they have had high aspirations for coming through with a really big play. Play blown dead there. So they're going to take a look at the catch by Angada, who's really barely played the last couple of years because of so many injuries. But the senior, as gifted as anybody on the field any given Saturday. So a rule to completed pass, a great diving play. Take another look. Yeah, and I, and I believe he catches this, does a good job of squeezing the football there. You like to be able to you kind of turn your body but from the angle we have you know, I think he's secured that before he hits the ground and you know just to stick on Ngata for a little bit here you know we were here shortly after he arrived on campus and there have been a ton of outstanding wide receivers that have come through this program Dabo his entire staff was excited to have him here basically said look this is the next guy in line you mentioned it it's been the injury bug that that has kept him off the field and I think stunted his development, but the size, speed, and ability to do that. After further review, see what? the ruling on the field stands. First down. A 41-yard reception. That's just a spectacular play. There's no other way to describe that. And as we talk about DJ and, and, and DJ playing better, the guys around him need to play better. The guys that have played wide receiver here for previous quarterbacks made those plays. I think DJ needs guys to step up and do what Ngata did there. He will wind up on the far right on this one as they put Allen inside. And a handoff, and again, it'll be Shipley diving ahead for a gain of three, stopped by Kibi Rose. So second and goal here for the Tigers. Knocking on the door here in front of a packed house at Death Valley. Shipley again. Right in the pile. And he goes. He is in for a touchdown. Will Shipley. And he has run for a touchdown in a sixth consecutive game. Listen, and the guys up front are getting movement. I mentioned it earlier about the athletic matchup on the line of scrimmage. Good push of the guys up front. And Shipley, you know, everyone talks about his speed. I think he runs with more power than people realize. He does a nice job of getting small, wiggling his way into the end zone. Well, led Clemson to rushing touchdowns, attempts, yards. All of that is a true freshman. Potter on for the extra point. He will drill that. Dabo told us that DJ Uyunglele was in a good place. And you can be in a good place when you've got wide receivers like Joseph Ngata making plays like that. And then the ability to hand it to Will Shipley 
is able to power his way into the end zone. Your father knows about saving money. Only Duke's mayo has twang. It's that little southern something that elevates food from good to downright ridiculous. Get Duke's. It's got twang. Bojangles Family Meal has more to choose from. Coleslaw. Dirty rice. Mac and cheese. Those scratch-made biscuits. More choices of handcrafted fixings for everyone. You won't find that in a bucket or a bundle. It's bow time. <laughs> Take control of your health by boosting your force field, the immune system. With the Aura Ring, you can listen to your body's signals and raise your defenses. Aura tells you when your temperature is higher than normal, how to improve your sleep, or if your heart rate shows signs of stress, so you can decide to push yourself or to lie low. Live smarter, stronger, healthier with the Aura Ring. Aura. Fubo TV has the most college football you can get without cable. Stream up to four games at once with MultiView. Watch your favorite teams live on all your devices. Try free at FuboTV.com. Well, this Clemson football program took the field tonight with very heavy hearts. 15-year-old Ella Brzee, the younger sister of star defensive tackle Brian Brzee, passed away on Thursday morning after a battle with brain cancer. She's a young girl who's been a huge part of this program. She was here with the team just last week, spoke to them after practice, and then Clemson honored her during their Tiger Walk before the Furman game last week. Coach Sweeney told me that little girl always has a smile on her face as if nothing were going on in her life. It's part of the reason why her impact is seen and felt all across campus here from the signs, the Ella Strong t-shirts, even the entire student section wearing gray tonight. It is the official color of brain cancer in her honor. Coach Sweeney says he knows they can't take the family's pain away, but they've been sharing in it and celebrating her throughout the week as they hope the Brazil family feels the love and the support that they have right here in Clemson. Well, Dabo said it. What a great, great smile. And said that every time they saw Ella, she had one. And this is marvelous to look around inside Memorial Stadium here tonight and see the support for the Brazil family and for Ella. Yeah, amazing. Uh, no, it is amazing. And you know, our, our thoughts and our prayers are certainly with the Brazil family. Tigers on top 10 0 here in the first as the Bulldogs look to keep it on the ground here. Of course, NFL great Terry Bradshaw was a first round draft pick out of La Tech. Overall number one in 1970 by the Pittsburgh Steelers. This is going to lose one yard, bring up second down and 11. Tigers coming in, the number five ranked team in the country. After a 31 point road win at Georgia Tech and a 35 12 victory over Furman. Neal will throw over the top here and it's going to be complete. Now we're going to be caught by Abair, his tight end, and we'll pick up a first down. That's his favorite target, no question about that. Former wide receiver. And it's an RPO, and Aurora is right in the face of McNeil. He does a good job of kind of staring down the pressure right in his face as he gets the ball to Abair. And Abair is a unique player because he's a tight end, but he's about 230 pounds, got really good speed. Kind of treating him as a wide receiver at times. That's a nice thrown catch. Yeah, gain of 31. So a big first down here for the Bulldogs. And on the ground is Crosby. No room to go there. Row, row, row with another stop on that play. The defensive tackle drags him down for a loss of three. And Aurora is just such a, an active player. You know, there's so many good players on this Clemson defensive line. And, a lot of guys that you know get talked about you know each and every week and he's somebody that you know his name's not always the first one mentioned but when when you watch them play he just seems to be so active and near the football quite often Tigers also without Tyler Davis up top on the defensive line here tonight they have a few people down minor injuries right now McNeil will air this one out they're going to try a little trickery here as well and a long, long heave, and that's going to be intercepted. Intercepted by R.J. Mickens. 
The junior out of Texas. So watch what happens. They put Smoke Harris in here and watch the quarterback. So now he's going to step back to double pass. But Mickens never falls for the double pass. You can see that this ends up being backwards. Then they're trying to run down the middle of the field, but Mickens doesn't go for it. They don't have a fast reaction to the wide receiver screen. And Mickens does a good job of securing the football. Definitely has a foot in bounds. Clemson football. New Subway Series menu, the greatest sandwich roster ever assembled. Tony, the new outlaws got double pepper jack and juicy steak. Well, let's get some more analysis on that, Chuck. Mmm, pepper jack. Tender steak. Very insightful, guys. The new Subway Series, what's your pick? Babe, I love this cabinets to go closet. You and me both. I mean, it's perfect. So organized, so much storage. It's made everything better. Don't you think? Wow. Where'd you get the red carpet? Wow changes everything, and for less than you ever imagined. Cabinets to go. This is how you wow for less. Wow, wow. On an urgent fansville by Dr. Pepper. Hurry, it's almost kickoff. I am. Oh, they logged me out. What's the password? OK, it's P23XR ampersand. Dude, the cat's lock is on. Ah! How much time we got? I miss basic cable. Here we go. What was that? What was that? Oh no, I got the spinning wheel. Fans Town by Dr. Pepper. Oh, this commercial. Game hasn't started. They play these too much. Dr. Pepper, the one fans deserve. My hair started to thin, and I took a pharmaceutical drug that caused severe side effects such as sexual dysfunction. Nutrafol is a drug-free natural supplement that gave me my hair, my health, and my confidence back. Get growing at Nutrafol.com. Hi, it's me again. Listen to this. Medicare Part C plans with extra benefits like getting money added back to your Social Security check every month may now be available to you in your zip code. Make sure you're not missing out. It's simple. One, call the number on your screen. Two, they'll look up your zip code and see if you're eligible. Three, they'll check for plans with extra benefits like prescriptions, dental coverage, and the benefit that adds money back to your Social Security check every single month. Call now. I called to get everything I deserve. I called to check my zip code for a plan with the benefit that adds money back to my Social Security check. I called to check my zip code. Check your zip code. It could be dynamite. Call now. Call 800-965-6621. That's 800-965-6621 now. R.J. Mickens with his third career interception. His dad played in the NFL. Outstanding play here. And the pick for the Tigers. They take over the football. And already on top, 10 to nothing. Uyunglele rolling and firing, and that'll be incomplete. He wanted Dakari Collins, but a misfire there, bringing up second down. Yeah, that's a, you know, listen, he's got an open receiver and it's not an accurate throw. It's kind of difficult. It's kind of moving to his left. I think it surprised him how open the corner became. Really wasn't able to get his left shoulder to the target to, to make an accurate throw. Well, many have said it. You know, his fame sort of preceded performance. He's had to battle a lot of things, some of them off the field here. Spectre, he's going to be knocked down. Good stop here by B.J. Williamson, preseason all-conference for La Tech. Going to pick up two yards. But you know, all that commercial presence for D.J. Tim and then his parents, a very public separation, all brought tremendous pressure on the young man. The coaches love him. His teammates really love him. They all rave about his work ethic, his investment in the program. And there is no doubt in the minds of the Clemson Tigers, this is his team. He is not in a quarterback battle. He's going to keep it here across the 10. Diving shy of the 20-yard line and picks up a first. Well, Dave, you said it. it. It is his team. They were very clear. There is no quarterback controversy. 
they run a quarterback draw on third and long as Louisiana Tech was playing soft in coverage, and that's certainly something he's comfortable doing running the football. But I also think he's more comfortable in his offense as a leader and then also with what the expectations have been for him. Running for 10 there for the first down. He will throw again. Running stool to tight end. Tyler Grubbs, who's the top defender for La Tech, taking him down. And one of the things they would like is for DJ to not pay as much attention to social media, which is a really good idea. Heck, it's hard for adults to stay away from social media, let alone a young college athlete. And social media rarely kind or reasonable or even sane. He's going to hand off, but La Tech saw that coming. Toby Pace taken down quickly. Going to lose two yards and clock in on the hit. It just goes to show you the amount of pressure on, listen, it, college students, period. You know, much less a college student that's replacing Trevor Lawrence and played a game as a freshman and the expectations were so high. And then I said it earlier, the supporting cast wasn't as good. You know, Travis Etienne wasn't there for him. And, you know, he didn't have receiver. Justin Ross wasn't able to stay healthy. So those things matter. And I think it was hard for him last year. And they said to us over and over again, he's in a really good place right now. And he's played like it so far. Yeah, much better place than a year ago. Back to throw. Pressure. He's going to be taken down. And by Jaden Cole, who'll pick up his first sack of the year. Also has an interception. A strong safety. He got to him fast. Yeah, and Kobe Pace kind of gets confused in, in the blitz pickup. And so you end up having two going for one with he and Marcus Tate which ultimately leaves Jaden Cole open, you know, an open path to the quarterback. And so the guys up front, a little confusion, good job of kind of dialing something up by Scott Powers, the defense coordinator for Louisiana Tech to get home. Smoke Harris back at his 45 yard line as Aiden Swanson gets this one in the air. And Harris darts around a couple of tacklers and ahead across the 40 yard line. So a solid return, 43-yard punt. They met in the Humanitarian Bowl. Even Howard's Rock was there in the snow in Boise. Woody Dantzler with four TDs. Tommy Bond's first bowl win at Clemson. And the Tigers rolled over La Tech, 49 to 24 in that one. I mean, but the Gatorade, uh, I mean, it's, it's snow. A little snowball fight? Like, I don't Ice. know what looked stranger to me. The blue turf or the... The fact that Clemson was playing in snow, you know. Much better night tonight. Yes, absolutely beautiful tonight. Temperatures in the 80s today here in Clemson. Parker McNeil trying to get La Tech onto the scoreboard here late in the first quarter. And it's going to be tipped again. It's happened a couple of times in the early going. This time Carter, Barrett Carter, who had a pick last week against Furman very instinctive player they say yeah they, and they say the game comes naturally to him he's bringing the pressure off the slot and does a good job reacting to the football and you just to say too you know with this field position Louisiana Tech has you know it's a pretty good stop by their defense when you when you look at you know throwing an interception being able to come with us up with a stop to get decent field position I'm sure Sonny Cumbie's gonna do everything he can to try to come away with some points Second down 10, he'll throw it again. And got the completion on the near sideline to Lewis, the freshman. Malcolm Green, the corner there to say hello, and that'll gain three. And I think with where we are in the field right now as well, like kind of in no man's land. Like if, if I'm Sonny Cumbie, I'm thinking, yes, it's third and five, but I should have two downs to get this. The quarter may come into play here if I've got to think about it on fourth down, but I'm treating this as if I have two downs because of where I am on the field. First quarter winding down here, third down and five at the 34 of the Tigers. Hill will hand off, and there's a flag down on that game. That was by Thornton. The sophomore from Baton Rouge, Sheridan Jones, gets credit for the tackle. But and that 
you go right here, 72, Ellis. He's got the hold. Carter, you know, he just bear hugs him right there. That bear hug and then, you know, good reaction by Carter knowing he's getting held. That's a killer of a penalty because it was a nice run and, you know, who knows if they pick it up, but you're probably going to pick up one or two, which then would have put you in position to go for it on fourth down. You know, now you get a known passing situation with this crowd into it. I don't blame Sonny Cumbie for taking the quarter. So that will be the end of the first. Tigers on top here over La Tech, 10 to nothing. Number five team in the country trying to remain perfect and go to 3 and 0 on the young year. 10 nothing Tigers. What's fast and yummy and comes in a can? It's not what you think. It's potatoes. Potatoes. And now is your last chance to get one before they're gone. Yummy Can is the fast and easy way to make yummy baked potatoes right in your microwave. Look, no one likes waiting nearly an hour for potatoes to bake in the oven. Yummy Can makes it quick and easy. Simply place the potatoes on the specially designed raised base. Then pop it in the microwave. In just minutes, you'll be enjoying America's favorite baked side dish. Tender on the outside, oh so fluffy and steaming hot on the inside. Roast a potato incorrectly and it comes out burnt and dry. Microwave a potato by itself and it comes out mushy and dry. But Yummy Can's patent pending valve creates a steam pocket and the raised base lets heat circulate for even cooking. It does the job right, delivering perfect potatoes in just minutes. Now you can quickly make any kind of potato and then load it with your favorite toppings for a simple side dish that's sure to please. It's also great for making baked yams, sweet yummy holiday favorites, or delicious potato skins for the big game. Prepare fresh potatoes for mashing or homemade potato salad. Yummy Canned Potatoes makes it easy to prepare all this, and it's yours for just $19.99. Compact and lightweight, Yummy Can is easy to clean, easy to store. But wait, there's breaking news. Yummy Canned Potatoes is being discontinued. Due to rising costs and supply chain shortages, Yummy Can is shutting down and stopping manufacturing effective immediately. There is a strict limit of three Yummy Cans per order while supplies last. You still have time to get your very own Yummy Can potatoes, but you must act fast. Once they're gone, they're gone forever. Call 1-800-619-0942 or visit YummyCanPotatoes.com. So call 1-800-619-0942 now. The band is back together. Jordan Corner, Eric McLean, EJ Manuel, and the coach, Coach Mark Rick. Back out on the road, excited to be here. I know this place is going to be jumping. What a run. Taking it to the house, getting, picking them up, swimming them down. I see you, big dog. Morning, noon, and night. Morning, noon, and night. Morning, it's about to get wild. Every day can be a better day despite the challenge. All you gotta do is leave it better than you found it. Just look at the game summary. Shipley with some early work, five rushes, 35 yards, and a touchdown. And Clemson's brand new 127 foot Dabotron is also hard at work. The brand new scoreboard, and man, does it ever pulsate here at Death Valley. It's working. Third down and 15 here for Parker McNeil. He's going to dump this when a flag is down. Early start here for the Tigers. Intended for Trey Harris. Offside. Defense number 98. Five yard penalty. Repeat third down. That's on Miles Murphy. The big defensive end, 6'5, 275. He's going to be easy to spot. So just getting started here in the second. And we'll bring up third and 10 now for the feedback here tonight, too. So our apologies for that. Third and ten. 
McNeil is the backup at Texas Tech for one year. But now it's his show for the Bulldogs. He'll rifle that one and incomplete. He's trying to hit Cyrus Allen, who's a true freshman. Had a big game last week, Tim. Five catches, 121 yards, two touchdowns. Yeah, and they're really excited about Allen, who's a, a really fast player. And it just didn't look like McNeil got a good grip on that football and I think was a little bit nervous about how tight the coverage was and ends up missing outside. And what was really a promising drive, kind of offset by the Isaac Ellis holding penalty, it's led to a really long field goal attempt. Going to be 56 yards. And that's going to be blocked. Blocked by the Tigers. They've blocked a couple of punts this season. Barrett Carter comes away. He lets it loose. That's on the deck. And the Bulldogs say they have it back. And they do indeed. So Clemson recovered it and gave it right back to La Tech. What a wild play with the long field goal attempt. You know, Clemson's thinking they make it the football back. In fact, had Will Taylor back as a returner. And then the pressure is coming off this left-hand side. It gets blocked there. And then keep an eye on zero. Barrett Carter right here. He ends up coming up with the football. And then he takes off running with it. He's thinking, hey, I'm, I may score. There's big guys on the field if I can get through this first line. And then that ball slips out. You know, guys that aren't used to carrying the football just kind of aren't used to, to securing it through contact. It was actually the kicker, Buchanan, who forced that fumble. Put his helmet right on, right on the football. And what a break for Louisiana Tech because, listen, typically you get a blocked field goal attempt, especially that far out, you know, low kicks, low trajectory kicks on long field goals. You know, those typically get picked up and run back for touchdowns. Louisiana Tech kind of miraculously maintains possession. Now well, Clemson with a streak of 11 consecutive 10 win seasons at his second only to Alabama's 12 in a row as far as longest active streaks in college football. And the Tigers with 35 consecutive games won at Memorial Stadium as mentioned one of the longest home winning streaks in FBS history. And typically have absolutely no trouble with non conference opponents. Up here 10 to nothing, but they give it right back to Louisiana Tech. So it'll be at the 48. And Parker McNeil back to work. And he's got Marquise Crosby in the backfield with him, his top running back, who had 197 yards and two touchdowns in the first half last week against Stephen F. Austin. Different animal tonight, certainly. Getting it across the 50 yard line for a four yard push. Crosby taken down by Jeremiah Trotter, the son of the four time Pro Bowler. Yeah, Trotter's dad was a really, really good player, a physical downhill linebacker. And you know, I think the instincts and quickness that this Jeremiah Trotter plays with is somewhat reminiscent of his father. Trotter's six feet, about 230, sophomore. Second down six. McNeil throwing long as an open receiver is going to be caught for a big first down. Got that one out wide to Cyrus Allen before Jalen Phillips stopped a possible touchdown. 31 yarder. Here's the route combination. And then this corner wants to trap it. This is an awesome read. But Parker McNeil, you see that little extra hitch as he sees the corner falling into trap and then the ability to shoot the ball outside. That's a long throw. That's left hash deep down the field to the wide side of the field. And once again, it's Cyrus Allen showing good awareness, throttling down a little bit in that zone. It's a nice play by the quarterback. Yeah, and Allen, the freshman from New Orleans, he can get open. McNeil over the middle, and that's going to be broken up, incomplete. Let's get out of Kelsey. 
Well, what a play that was from Parker McDill, and I got to talk to him this week about the opportunity that he has to be the quarterback here. It's been a journey, you guys. Started off in Juco, tried it out at Troy, and thought his career was over after that, but it was his head coach, Sony Comby, that texted him when he was the head coach at Texas Tech and said, hey, you want to come play for me? He, of course, did, and then followed his head coach here. He says he's put in so much work. It's what your life revolves around. This is the opportunity of a lifetime to be the quarterback for this team. Well, showing some good arm strength here tonight. He's looking downfield again and that's one is going to be incomplete broken up by the Tigers again over the middle trying to connect with Trey Harris but incomplete. Yeah, and you know what an opportunity for Parker McNeil you know to think maybe football's over and then next thing you know you get this opportunity you see that pass break up there oh, a chance to be caught. You get this opportunity, you think football's over, and the next thing you know, here you are in one of the coolest environments in college football, on third down with this crowd noise, having a chance to lead your football team. Third and ten. They've converted one thus far. Trailing by ten here in the second. That one tossed out to that sideline and connecting with Thornton. And incomplete. So that'll bring up fourth down. And we've seen a couple times on third down, especially third and long, really the last two, where Clemson is really driving on these out, outside routes, routes outside the numbers. If I'm Sonny Cumbie, I'm thinking at some point I'm coming back on a third and long and double moving the aggressiveness of Clemson up front. This will be a 35 yard attempt from Jacob Barnes, who's also a licensed pilot. Gets that one in the air, and that's good. And so the Bulldogs get on the board with the field goal from 35 from Jacob Barnes, a 10-3 game. Take your favorite radio stations, the music you love, and the biggest podcasts in the world wherever you go with the free iHeartRadio app. Download it now. iHeart Podcast is the number one podcast network and is home to the biggest creators in podcasting and your favorite sports podcasts like All the Smoke, Around the NFL, The Dan Patrick Show, and many more. Listen on the iHeart Radio app or wherever you listen to podcasts. Take control of your health by boosting your force field, the immune system. With the Aura Ring, you can listen to your body's signals and raise your defenses. Aura tells you when your temperature is higher than normal, how to improve your sleep, or if your heart rate shows signs of stress, so you can decide to push yourself or to lie low. Live smarter, stronger, healthier with the Aura Ring. Aura. Hey, feeling good, like I should. Hi folks, Medicare Part C plans with extra benefits like getting money added back to your Social Security check may now be available to you in your zip code. Make sure you're not missing out. It's simple. One, call the number on your screen. Two, they'll look up your zip code and see if you're eligible. Three, they'll check for plans with extra benefits like prescriptions, dental coverage, and the benefit that adds money back to your Social Security check every single month. Call now. I called to get everything I deserve. I called to check my zip code for a plan with a benefit that adds money back to my Social Security check. I called to check my zip code. Millions of people have called the Medicare Coverage Helpline. Call, check your zip code, see if you're eligible, and get what you deserve. Call now. Call 1-800-617-3964. That's 1-800-617-3964 now. With your RV Studio update, Texas Tech at NC State, and this highlight coming from right before the end of the second quarter, it's Aiden White, and he is off like he is caring, looking for a manager, because he would like to have a word. He takes this one 84 yards to the end zone. NC State leads 20-7 to at the half. Back to you guys. Jordan, thank you very much. 10-3. The Tigers have the lead here. They may have gotten away with something a couple of moments ago. We're going to show you on the field goal, the make by LaTeX. They're going to kick off here. 
And Shipley will let that one go through the end zone. They'll bring it out to the 25, back to that moment. Well, listen, I want you to see Trenton Simpson, who's right there. He basically ends up using leverage, pushing off of an offensive player to jump over. You can't do that. That's a penalty. It's a really a player safety rule. You know, in terms of both sides of the football, really would have been a, been a penalty and it changed kind of how that drive ends up for Louisiana Tech. Clemson, I think, fortunate that they weren't flagged for it. First and 10 here for Clemson. Louis Ungalale will keep. He's been running well in the early going here. And a stop by Kyrie Morrison, a four yard pickup by the quarterback. Now the critics were on him during last year's 10 and 3 season, wondering can he recapture the magic of that 2020 18 point deficit comeback win that he engineered over Boston College? Moffa in the backfield will take the handoff. Big opening before he's tripped up and dragged down. He'll pick up a first. B.J. Williamson stopped a larger gain there. That'll pick up eight yards. Yeah, and you know, the stable of running backs here, you know, Will Shipley gets the majority of, of the work, but Phil Moffa has been a productive back, and I think they like everybody. We saw Kobe Pace earlier. You know, it, it's it's not like it's it's just one guy's job here in the backfield for Clemson offensively. They'll put it in the air, and it's going to be in and out of the hands of Engada, who has caught a sensational ball already tonight for a huge gain over 40 yards, but this one incomplete. And these are the plays, Dave. You know, it, it's a great decision. It's a good throw right to the face mask of Engada. And look, if, you, if you're going to, you know, kind of uphold the tradition of wide receivers, you've got to make that play, you know, and then we're not talking about the quarterback and his completion percentage when guys will come down with the ball the way they should have there like Joseph and God ahead. Well, you're just so used to seeing those catches being made here over and over year after year. Not only that, but big yards after the catch. Yeah, I mean, listen, then you got to tackle him once he catches it. And at 220, that's not easy to do. Moff again getting some blocking out across the 40. Will pick up four yards. Tyler Grubbs, who leads La Tech in tackles. He's their number one defender the middle linebacker with that stop and brings up third down and six. And so you know, we far. saw it earlier on a third down. Sorry David the quarterback draw is in play and, and so I think ultimately if we see Louisiana Tech it's probably packaged to show him blitz you can see a pass if they play soft could see quarterback draw once again. Big Cinco back to throw. Downfield, and that one is going to be completed. Caught by Antonio Williams. Very talented freshman out of Irmo, South Carolina. And a 38 yard strike. And this is this is a good job all the way around. Well, look at the blitz pickup by Phil Maffa, and then down here, you know, winning on the route. Excuse me, he's the inside slot guy, inside fade. Great blitz pickup, and then a good job on the inside fade of holding your stem and reacting to the football by Williams. Empty backfield here. Louis Ungalale carries it out again for a short one out to the 20 yard line and a catch by Maffa for two. You know, and I said it earlier about, hey, listen, make the plays. The moment of truth. If you're a wide receiver, who cares what your route was? Moment of truth when the ball's there, you come down with it. You know, we call them 50 50 balls sometimes. At Clemson, you know, they were calling them 80 20 once upon a time. They need to get back to that. And guys like Antonio Williams, Joseph Ngata need to do that for his quarterback. Adam Randall, the gifted freshman wide receiver, who they are raving about into the game, but they're going to go for the corner and incomplete. They wanted Bo Collins, but too deep. Good coverage by R.J. Johnson. Talking about Adam Randall, five star recruit who suffered a nasty knee injury in spring practice where he was turning heads, finally getting in. Everyone here in Clemson knows who number eight is and how good he can be. Dabo says he's a problem. 
He, he said no assembly required. He's ready to play <laughs> even as a young player. Right now, got an NFL body. DJ with pressure will hang it up there, and that is going to be broken up and nearly intercepted by Tyler Grubbs on that outstanding pressure. Yeah, see, that, that's where I think DJ can be better. Okay, they're static in the pocket. So watch how, you know, things get disrupted inside. He's got people around him, wants to escape. You know, he gets contacted. Now throw it away. You know, I, I get it. You know, it's third down. You're trying to, you know, convert. But right there, that is nearly a critical mistake. It's probably what Dabo is saying to him right now. Look, we've got three. It doesn't go right. Don't make a bad situation worse. Potter on. This will be 36 yards. The field goal attempts. Got it up, and it is perfect. And three more for the Tigers. Can't help but think they were looking for more than that. They wanted more. 13 to 3, Clemson leading La Tech. Jake from State Farm. I really want that personal price plan. So I'll admit it. I'm a bath bomb guy. Dude, you do not need to get that personal. The State Farm personal price plan simply helps you create an affordable price just for you. For real? Who's ready for their jazz bath? No? <laughs> Who is that guy? Jazz bath? Call or click to get a quote today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. It's the all new Subway Series menu. 12 irresistible new subs. The most epic sandwich roster ever created. It's Subway's biggest refresh yet. The new iPhone 14 Pro. It's amazing. Yep, the camera is incredible. Ooh. And you'll get our best deal. Nice. But everyone should get it. Everyone can get it. Every new customer. And every existing customer. Every iPhone. Every iPhone. Every iPhone. Every iPhone. Every iPhone. OK, my work here is done. Everyone gets the best deal on every iPhone. It's amazing. Everyone gets AT&T's best deals on every iPhone. Get the new iPhone 14 Pro on us. Are you coming for my job? Start playing and never stop playing. You get the most from the game when you're having fun. Why do nearly one million businesses choose Stamps.com to mail and ship? No more trips to the post office. No more paying full price for postage. And great rates from USPS and UPS. Mail letters. Ship packages. Anytime. Anywhere. For less. A lot less. Get our special TV offer. A four-week trial plus postage and a digital scale. Go to stamps.com slash TV and never go to the post office again. There's a look at a brand new scoreboard here at Clemson. It is five times larger than the previous board. 20 times the resolution. It's the eighth largest board. The NCAA 6.7 million pixels and a total stadium renovations some other things here as well in Death Valley worth sixty five million dollars. The fans are loving it. And it's a big time board man. Look how small it was before and how much larger it is now. <laughs> I can't say I was ever here thinking well, they got a, a small video board but now when you put it up in comparison my word. I want to know what happened to the old one is that like in Dabo's backyard. Near the swimming pool. There's a, there's a shot that it's shown up somewhere. 13 to 3, the Tigers, 9.36 to go in the second. And Smoke Harris will elect to run this one out across the 10. And he is stacked up at the 15. Let's get out of Kelsey. I've been wondering where that scoreboard's going too, guys. I was asking this week. I think people would probably pay a pretty penny just to even have a letter off of that scoreboard. But I asked DJ about it too. I said, what's it like? Have you gotten used to seeing yourself that big in the end zone when you run out on that big screen? And he said, look, I remember running out and I was like, dang, that is a big scoreboard. Said he is just like you guys. You didn't realize how small it was until you see how big this new scoreboard is. Everybody here definitely enjoying it in the entrance as well, guys. And he's just fine. He's a well-conditioned athlete. Not all of us need to see ourselves that big <laughs> in front of this many people. First down at 10 for Louisiana Tech. Thornton in at the running back. Going to dump this one off short to Smoke Harris. Thus far, they're really keying on Harris. He's not been able to 
wriggle free very much. Mickens, who has an interception, taking him down, and the 5 7 wide receiver will head off to the sideline. A three yard pickup there. You know, just get initially contacted by Mickens, and then you know, look at the, the finish by Justin Mascall. Just kind of folds him, and Harris a little bit shaken up. This should be a really good Clemson defense. Do you agree? I mean, they, I, I, they need to be relentless up front and get to the quarterback, but should be really good. Dave, I think it's a great point. Yes, because they're good at every level, and I think that's the key for them defensively. It's not just the D-line. O'Neal wants to throw very deep and has a receiver for a major league completion. Big time effort there in the catch by Lewis. The freshman with the grab. Yeah, Julian Lewis just gets inside, runs a post route, and there was nobody in the middle of the field, and that's a heck of a throw. But Parker McNeil just drops it right in there. Good protection up front. I, I will say, you, you know, McNeil has got plenty of arm, and when the pocket has been clean, he's done a nice job of being accurate. 38-yard pickup to bring a first and 10. They're driving it again. He's 9 out of 16, 128 yards. And a flag down on that carry by Charvis Thornton, but a flag dropped. Charvis Thornton, personal foul. Face mask, defense number 42. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Levante Bentley had a big one against Georgia Tech at 13 tackles, but... I think it actually may be here on McGuire right there. 42 comes in afterwards. It's on McGuire, the face mask. Either way, a pretty good break for Louisiana Tech. And, you know, running the ball has been such a chore for Louisiana Tech. You know, you get positive yards on a called run play penalty or not, it's probably a sense of relief for this Louisiana Tech offense. Well, they racked up 515 yards last week, 299 on the ground, but that was against Stephen F. Austin. First down and 10, under eight to go before halftime. Carry here by Crosby, trying that right side, but came up empty. Henry with the stop. And, and Dave, you know, just to kind of follow up with, you know, this Clemson defense, there's been some change. You know, I mean, it's. We know the defensive line is good, but, you know, Trenton Simpson, who's an outstanding player, he's now playing, you know, inside more. And just, the talent's still there. They've recruited year over year over year. And when you do that, you just replace talent with talent. Second and 10 for La Tech. McNeil to step up. Pressure from behind. He's going to be dragged down by the Tigers. As they get to the quarterback, that's Miles Murphy. When all is going well, that's All-American material. Yeah, well, and listen, look at him rush up the field. This is just great pursuit and effort. Yeah, and that's what you need out of a great defense. It's great that you're on, you know, Todd McShay's big board, but do you play hard? Do you hustle to the football? Murphy did just that. You see he's ranked the number one defensive end, but playing with good effort and pursuit kind of takes you to the next level. La Tech minus three yards rushing, uh, just five carries. They've determined they've got to put it in the air to survive here tonight. Third down, 11. McNeil, the 6'6 quarterback. Another throw and another completion, and breaking away and getting down to the 10 yard line. Nice effort there by Lewis again to pick up the first down. That gains 19. And once again, McNeil with a nice pocket. Clean pocket, nice throwing lane. He's got plenty of arm. You know, Sonny Cumbie joked that they call him Philip Rivers because he wears 17. Keeping it on the ground here on the carry by Crosby. And, and listen, Louisiana Tech going quick. He ended up getting 12 men on the field. It's going to be a, a flag thrown. Clemson not ready, didn't get off, substituting in time. Illegal substitution. More than 11 players on the field. Defense, five-yard penalty, still first down. So the pace that the Bulldogs want to play at, catching Clemson at least there, a scramble. And then you see him, you know, guys getting off, you know. KJ Henry just not able to get off in time. I'm not sure Murphy did either. 
Good job of changing up the tempo by Sonny Cumby to pick up cheap five yards. First and goal from the five yard line. Marquise Crosby the back. They'll take the handoff and they're going to push him back. Nothing there for Crosby, not on that carry. Demonte Capehart, first man to meet him. He's going to lose two yards on that play. And look, running the football, I said it earlier, has been a chore. Doing it down and tight here, probably going to be even more difficult. And so, said I, I'm Sonny Cumby. I'm trying to come up with well, my, my most creative inside the 10 play that I have in the plan because the truth is, Look, the last couple of weeks, we've seen some pretty exciting upsets. And here you go. You know, just about five minutes left in the first half. Only down 10. Could make it feel real tight. Mm. Very much alive, yes. And just two to get off a of play in a timeout. First timeout. Louisiana Tech. Their first of the half. They are knocking on the door. 13-3 Tigers. La Tech trying to bang it in. Auto owners insures your car because sometimes something from out of left field Whoa. can literally come from out of left field. That's simple human sense. Ask your independent agent if auto owners make sense for you. A big bow box says a lot about a person. Like they have a mighty hunger, a powerful thirst, and take tailgating very seriously. Game day and beyond, grab a football ready big bow box. Hey, sorry I missed your game. It's okay. You see that? That's when I realized it's time to finally do the thing we've been talking about for years. So we're making plans for right now. Start your plan today with a Northwestern Mutual financial advisor and spend your life living. Introducing the all-new one-wheel GT in Pint X. GT, built with more power to crush new terrain. Pint X, twice the range to take on the city. Two new boards to make everywhere epic. Get riding today at onewheel.com. My hair started thinning in my early 20s. I'm genetically predisposed, so we created Nutrafol. Nutrafol is the number one dermatologist recommended hair growth supplement. It's never too late to improve your hair health. Get started at nutrafol.com slash men. With insurance from auto owners, you can relax knowing we got you covered. That's simple human sense. Ask your independent agent if auto owners make sense for you. I should do this for a living. Short quarter, Eric McLean, EJ Manuel, and a coach, Coach Mark Rick. I know this place is going to be jumping. Morning, 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 it's about to get wild. tight 13 to 3 the Tigers on La Tech. Well, I mean listen Sheridan Jones on the bench he is a starting corner really good player played a lot of football you just look at the, the look on his face obviously something not right has not been in the game and so now you got some young corners some untested corners in the football game for Clemson. Second down goal for the Bulldogs. McNeil pressure on him dumps it off got it complete but shy at a 10 yard line KJ Henry and Griffin a bear able to get in there and it's a nice play screens you mentioned it earlier Dave about getting tested on screens and Tyler Venables from the free safety position does a nice job of running the alley look he's backside diagnoses it and is able to, to get there and make a play on the football and McNeil it's only the first half, but he's definitely taken a few shots so far tonight. Now they play losing three, third and goal at the 11. And a handoff here, and going to be actually did not hand it off, but a delay. Timeout. Louisiana Tech. They're second of the half. They take a timeout. 
And we'll take the break as well on third and goal with 4.10 to go here before halftime at Clemson. The new Subway Series menu, the greatest sandwich roster ever assembled. For more on the new boss, here's Patrick Mahomes. Incredible. Meatballs, fresh mozzarella, and pepperoni. Oh, the meatball's out. I thought he never fumbles. The new Subway Series. What's your pick? Start playing and never stop playing. You get the most from the game when you're having fun. What's fast and yummy and comes in a can? It's not what you think. It's potatoes. Potatoes. And now is your last chance to get one before they're gone. Yummy Can is the fast and easy way to make yummy baked potatoes right in your microwave. Look, no one likes waiting nearly an hour for potatoes to bake in the oven. Yummy Can makes it quick and easy. Simply place the potatoes on the specially designed raised base. Then pop it in the microwave. In just minutes, you'll be enjoying America's favorite baked side dish. Tender on the outside, oh so fluffy and steaming hot on the inside. Roast a potato incorrectly and it comes out burnt and dry. Microwave a potato by itself and it comes out mushy and dry. But Yummy Can's patent pending valve creates a steam pocket and the raised base lets heat circulate for even cooking. It does the job right, delivering perfect potatoes in just minutes. Now you can quickly make any kind of potato and then load it with your favorite toppings for a simple side dish that's sure to please. It's also great for making baked yams, sweet yummy holiday favorites, or delicious potato skins for the big game. Prepare fresh potatoes for mashing or homemade potato salad. Yummy Canned Potatoes makes it easy to prepare all this, and it's yours for just $19.99. Compact and lightweight, Yummy Can is easy to clean, easy to store. But wait, there's breaking news. Yummy Canned Potatoes is being discontinued. Due to rising costs and supply chain shortages, Yummy Can is shutting down and stopping manufacturing effective immediately. There is a strict limit of three Yummy Cans per order while supplies last. You still have time to get your very own Yummy Can Potatoes but you must act fast. Once they're gone, they're gone forever. Call 1-800-619-0942 or visit yummycanpotatoes.com. So call 1-800-619-0942 now. Well, Tim Dabo is obviously pleased by what they did on third down against Georgia Tech, not so much against Furman. And then you mentioned it earlier, it was the screen game that kind of got them against Furman. We just saw a screen in the red zone. It was a good, uh, you know, response by Clemson defensively, but now a big third down in the red zone for this Clemson defense. Now biggest of the game to this point. Parker McGill trying to get the Bulldogs into the end zone. Crosby will carry that one bowling ahead. And he's going to gain six before Murphy met him. Interesting play call by Sonny Cumbie, but it looks like he's keeping his offense out there and maybe on fourth and five. Going to end up going for it. Certainly looking like he's taking his time and thought it was strange to run the football from the 12 yard line, basically saying, look, you're already in field goal range, but maybe he wanted to see what he was going to get out of it before deciding to maybe go for it on fourth down. And also, quite honestly, taking a lot of time off the clock here towards the end of the second half or the second quarter. And another timeout. So 322 to go before halftime. We we're talking about Sonny Cumbie, the head coach for the Bulldogs. Take you back to 04 in the Holiday Bowl. Cal and quarterback Aaron Rodgers entering the game after missing out in the Rose Bowl. Texas Tech quarterback Sonny Cumbie throwing for 520 yards three touchdowns the Red Raiders winning big they came in number 23 in the country Cal number four final score was 45 to 31 and he was the offensive MVP you forgot Aaron Rodgers played in that game because Sonny Cumbie went off I mean just to go to show you you saw him standing next to Aaron too pretty tall guy and the former walk on but I mentioned earlier just understanding the passing game and done a good job coaching this team so far this season and Team still in it. So going for the field goal from 27. And Barnes will connect. 
So going for the certain points there, 13 to six. And what has thus far been a low scoring first half. So let's talk a little big picture around the ACC today and what happened the other night. Florida State last night defeating Louisville 35 31. Crazy game. Syracuse knocking off Purdue. Talk about a crazy game. 32 <laughs> to 29. The Orange looking like they are for real. And Virginia sneaking by Old Dominion 16-14. Yeah, it was almost crazy starting last night. You wonder how healthy Jordan Travis will be going forward. Garrett Schrader has been awesome for Syracuse. What a response in the dome to lead them back and throw the, you know, essentially the game-winning touchdown pass. And then Virginia doing a good job of holding on at home. You thought maybe they were going to let that one slip away, much like Virginia Tech had one slip away against Old Dominion. But Brennan Armstrong able to get them in position to kick the game-winning field goal. So definitely a lot of fun ones to watch between last night and throughout the day today. Yeah, Wake Forest, as mentioned, number 19 in the country, hanging on for a one-point victory over Liberty. Here comes Shipley. And he's going to be tripped up getting across the 20, taking that back to the 22-yard line. You know, DJ Uyunglele has done a, done a pretty good job so far, mainly in the quarterback run game, making decisions on the zone read. Been big play, and then, you know, attacking down the field. We know he's got a big arm and needs guys to make plays like Ngata did there, and then obviously to Antonio Williams as well. So I think ultimately, when you look at how he's played so far, it's been pretty good. You know, a lot of people ask me, hey, like, is he better than he was a year ago? Is he better? And, you know, we were told he's in a better place, and I do think he's a better quarterback than he was this time a year ago. Well, nine completions to seven different wide receivers. So spreading it out, wants to throw again here on first down and dumping it off short to Shipley, who has run out of bounds. Just over three minutes to go in the first half. Let's go down to Kelsey. Well, I talked to DJ Uyunglele this week, and he told me, look, each and every week my main goal is to try and get better, to learn from my mistakes from the game before, and to build on the things that I did well. He said, so far, I feel like I've done a good job, but as an athlete, knows there's always room for improvement. There's time in the pocket, and he wanted Ngata there on the near sideline, but overthrown. Coverage there by Willie Roberts. And that's an example of making a good decision. It was working to his left. It was all covered up. He had time, so he comes back to his right kind of late in terms of how the route was defining itself. Go ahead and throw it away. Like that, That's actually a good play by the quarterback, and I think there's just been so much attention on him. Can he get better? Sure, but a lot of things around him that can improve also. Third and four. They'll rifle that one. Oh, what an attempt there by Agata with a one-handed offering on it, but incomplete. Going there with Roberts, the crowd wanted interference. And this is what I mean about guys around him being better. Will Shipley just gets absolutely ragdolled back into DJ's lap, which, I mean, here's Shipley, okay? Just watch what happens to him here. And you tell me if it's easy to play quarterback with that going on around you. And then, look, again, I'll say it before, it would have been a great catch, but he was not able to finish his throw. It would have been a great catch by Angada. But again, like, the quarterbacks in the past have had wide receivers that come up with catches like that. Harris will scoop it up on the bounce. Tiptoeing around the 30. Flags dropped right there with 2.29 to go. Late in the second quarter, it went for 45. Shipley did come off limping a little bit. Look, here, here's the deal. If you're running back in pass protection, you can't catch. You've got to go attack. And if you catch. During the return, illegal block in the back. Receiving team number eight. Ten-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down, Louisiana Tech. Listen, if you catch, you know, somebody coming and you catch, you know, you end up taking the, the worst of it. You know, there's a hammer and there's a nail. And so if you catch, you know, you end up being the nail. I'll say this. Just look at this situation now in a, in a one possess, you know, a one score game. You know, the key here for Louisiana Tech, pick up a first down at a minimum, just try to flip the field and not leave too much time for Clemson to put another score on the board in the first half. 
Now Parker McNeil has shown the ability to throw the deep ball. He's had some major strikes tonight for the Bulldogs. And he's back to throw again. And to the sideline and complete on the toss to Lewis, who's been probably his favorite guy here in the first half. Yeah, which is, you know, interesting because you know, we talk so much about the Harrises, you know, Smoke Harris and Trey Harris, but, you know, Lewis been a really good player. Got some production out of the young guys as well. Gain of eight. This season, 12 different players with at least one reception, 18 with multiple catches. So they can spread it around as well. Second and short. And under two minutes before halftime here at Death Valley. He'll fire this one up again, and it's incomplete. Harris rising up, but cannot haul it in. Toriano Pride there. The freshman from St. Louis to cover him. Listen, this might be a problem for Clemson. This Pride, the, the freshman corner, I mean, he gets run by by Trey Harris. And that, Zach, that's a good throw by McNeil. This ball should be caught. Again, we saw Sheridan Jones, and McNeil knows it. Like, hey, listen, you won on the route. You did the hard part. Just come down with it. Third and two. The quarterback will try and lunge forward on it. And did he give up the ball here? Now, Clemson thinks that he did. And I just don't... You know, I mean, that's like third and a yard and a half. You see McNeil still fighting for the football. Yeah, battle for that. Just surprised by the call. You know, you're just not getting any movement up front. And then you just decide to pack it in there. It's like a yard and a half. Yeah. That ball's on the ground. It sure is. Now, it does look like McNeil maybe was able to grab it and his knee's on the ground. So a timeout Clemson and fourth down and three to go and we'll keep it right here 13 to six Tigers yeah, and I, I just look I quarterback sneak is a good play when it's when it's less than a yard you know you're typically under center all day like I just don't love that you know it's kind of outside the identity of Louisiana Tech offensively I think Sonny Cumby knows the, the play prior to that that he had an opportunity to Trey Harris, but I think the fear here now is you, know, you got to end up covering this punt. As you see, that the ball's on the ground quickly. I think that McNeil grabs it. So at that point, he's got possession. His knee's on the ground. Play should be over when he possesses it. Yeah, no review there. So Bulldogs back to punt. Will Taylor. And Taylor dragged down, really had nowhere to go. It's a 48 yard punt. And a good kick here. Late in the second quarter. And the Tigers have had all sorts of difficulty shaking La Tech here tonight in Death Valley. They really have. And you know, they had one bad break on a on a blocked field goal that ended up turning into a turnover on the Bear Carter fumble, but other than that, you know, I think Louisiana Tech's done a nice job of, of hanging around and you let a lesser team hang around. We've seen what's happened the last couple weeks in college football. Louisiana here comes Shipley with a head of steam. And they will drag him out and bring up second down. The stop by Singleton. That'll gain eight. And the Tigers to hurry up. With a minute to go before the break. DJ to rifle this one. And Gata trying to make something out of it. Stopped by Brooks. Listen, with, with two timeouts, every area of the field is, is in play. Obviously, the clock's going to stop until they set the football after a first down. And DJ obviously has the ability to attack every area. Time in the pocket. And Gata through his hands and incomplete. Jaden Cole with the coverage, the strong safety. And I think he 
You know, that ball's too high for Ngata to come down with. He's trying to kind of hit that soft spot between the corner and the safety in a cover two look, and he probably sat on that back foot a little too long as that window closed. Louis Ungalale out of the shotgun. Now he'll step up and run it. Been fairly active in the running attack. Grubbs will tie him up. He had a five-yard gain. And I'm a little surprised by that that call. It burned timeout, obviously, on the quarterback draw. But you essentially are conceding that you're going to burn that timeout by making that play call on second down. When, again, you have a quarterback who you know, I think you trust more now. You trust him playing from inside the pocket. Maybe they're just trying to get to a manageable third down to convert, but you know, I thought basically you decided that you were going to call that timeout by running the quarterback draw on second down. The kicker, BT Potter, getting ready. You see Shipley, you know, he's kind of he's going to lead up on this this quarterback draw, and you know, when you're catching and you're catching linebackers playing downhill. You're going to take the brunt of the contact. Yeah, he's been blown up a few times tonight, hasn't he? And he has, and look, that's not really his thing. That's kind of another reason I don't love the call. I mean, he's not a lead back, but you're asking him to be a lead back. You know, basically run an ISO when you run a quarterback draw. He's trying for another multi-touchdown game. Third down five. Big Cinco in the air again, and that one is going to be broken up by the Bulldogs you wanted Collins but it was Miles Brooks right there with him. Hey this is why pass protection matters. Look, now, now look at Shipley. Shipley is sick of getting run over. So what does he do? He's just trying to saw legs off now. He's trying to cut but now you got let you got people around the feet of your quarterback. And one of the things Brandon Streeter talked to us about was hey look his balance in the pocket his feet in the pocket. If you want to keep a quarterback you know calm you know, in the pocket, don't have people around his feet, don't have people in his lap. This Clemson offense has not done a good job of making that happen for their quarterback. No, and that was close to being picked off by Miles Brooks. He thought he should have had it. Here's Smoke Harris trying to make an effort, runs into his own man. He tried to get free, but he's taken out at the 20 yard line. So 20 seconds to go. And I'll bet a lot of people tuning in, this is much, much, much closer than they ever would have thought. Heck yeah, it is. It's a one-score game. I would expect Louisiana Tech to just take a knee, take this into the half. They won the toss, deferred, so they're going to get the ball to, to start the second half. Here's the other thing, as we see Sheridan Jones going in. We're talking about Jaden Lucas and Torian Pride. Two true freshmen that are playing corner for Clemson right now. You know, and it hasn't exactly been smooth sailing for either guy. Parker McNeil, the quarterback for the Bulldogs, has been a big story in this first half. He'll hand off for Crosby trying to get outside. And a stop by Fred Davis after a five yard pickup. So the last seconds are going to tick away here and the Clemson Tigers the number five team in the country Tim Hasselbeck they have a battle on their hands they got a big time battle on their hands and I'm sure there's going to be plenty of optimism can they catch him no that's a touchdown my goodness through all kinds of traffic a dive into the end zone he'll score cuts it the other way Hi folks, Medicare Part C plans with extra benefits like getting money added back to your Social Security check may now be available to you in your zip code. Make sure you're not missing out. It's simple. One, call the number on your screen. Two, they'll look up your zip code and see if you're eligible. Three, they'll check for plans with extra benefits like prescriptions, dental coverage, and the benefit that adds money back to your Social Security check every single month. Call now. I called to get everything I deserve. I called to check my zip code for a plan with a benefit that adds money back to my Social Security check. I called to check my zip code. 
Millions of people have called the Medicare coverage helpline. Call. Check your zip code. See if you're eligible and get what you deserve. Call now. Call 1-800-617-3964. That's 1-800-617-3964 now. Welcome back to ACC Network Primetime Football from Death Valley. We got a battle on our hands here. Number five Clemson with a 13 to six lead over La Tech. Dave O'Brien, Tim Hasselbeck, Kelsey Riggs with you. Tim, what about that first half? Surprising. I mean, to think we're in a one possession game here in Death Valley, you know, I think of the sputtering offense that we've seen from Clemson, inability to really protect the quarterback, the guys around him to make plays, and then obviously, some kind of unfortunate odd things happening as well where Louisiana Tech essentially steals another possession mm -hmm. kind of been the difference and I think there's got to be a lot of optimism coming out of the locker room if you're Louisiana Tech and they're going to get the football right away as the Tigers will kick off and we're set for the second half and here we go as Potter lays into it and Smoke Harris will let that one go to the back of the end zone we take a look at the Bojangles Big Bow moment of tonight's game. Well, and this is what I'm talking about in terms of some odd plays. It's a blocked field goal attempt, up 10 0. You know, they get their hands on the football. Usually these things are picked up and run back. But Bear Carter picks it up, runs it back, and then fumbles the football, which obviously Louisiana Tech gains possession, regains possession. They drive down, they come away with three points. And then, you know, some sputtering offense out of Clemson. Another late field goal by Louisiana Tech, and it's a seven-point game. Parker McNeil, first half, 12 for 20 passing, 152 yards. He took one sack. And flags immediately here. Off start. Offense number 78. Correction number 68. Five-yard penalty. It's still first down. And a moment ago, Kelsey with Sonny Cumbie. Coach Cumbie, it's a one possession game at the half. What did you tell your guys about the opportunity that you'd like to see them take advantage of? Well, there's a lot of missed opportunities that we've had out on the field, and we still find ourselves in a one possession game. I talked to him about there's nobody in this locker room that acts surprised about the score right now. And that's what I'm so appreciative about our team is we came out with the right mindset. This game's got a whole other game, uh, you know, half to play. Proud of how our guys have battled. We're going to have to battle even more in the second half. We're going to have to make sure that we're smart on offense with our possessions and that the defense is really flying around. Coach, thank you. Thanks a lot. Another pass batted down here. That's happened two or three times here tonight. A player down for the Tigers. So they have a man down here just seconds into the second half. He's absolutely right, though. They do not like, look like a team that is surprised to be where they are. No, they haven't. You know, and he's... I think Sonny Cumbie that is he's done a nice job calling this game, kind of managing this game and the possessions. And you know, I think when you do that, you've got a shot to, to help keep your team in it. Looks like that may be Peyton Page, 55. You know, he comes through clean and oh, you know, he gets kind of rolled up on behind by Trenton Simpson. Page 6'4", 315 pounds, the sophomore from Greensboro, North Carolina. So just getting the second half underway, Clemson on top 13 to 6, and Page will need some help to get to his feet. And off he comes. Louisiana Tech one and one lost their opener against Missouri resoundingly 52 to 24 came back and defeated Stephen F. Austin 52 to 17. Moved it really well on the ground They've not done that tonight. They have a total of four rushing yards. 
Clemson with 87. And yet they're right there. As they trail by seven. McNeil with another flag. Now we'll pick up the call on this one. Prior to the snap. False start. Offense number 58. Five yard penalty. It's still second down. A lot of guys out on the defensive side for the Tigers. Xavier Thomas has been unable to go this season and they're hoping to have him back soon. Yeah, I mean, guys in the D line, they obviously have a ton of depth there. Andrew Cooper, a little bit of a surprise being out. Nate, Wig Nate Wiggins as well, and because Nate Wiggins is out, and then the Sheridan Jones being out of the lineup, it's left them a little bit thin in the secondary. Empty backfield here on second down and long. McNeil, good protection, batted away again. I believe that's four times a row, row, row there to say no. And I think this is a scenario where Louisiana Tech really has to keep their composure. A couple false starts, have a, you know nearly a negative play, and then now you got third and forever. Just so make sure you don't make a mistake backed up. Going fast again. In the pocket, he'll rifle that one, and it's going to be picked off. Intercepted again, the second one of the ball game by the Tigers. That's Trotter. Jeremiah Trotter with the pick. And a big defensive play for the Tigers right away. It's a nice play by Trotter. He sinks deep into the zone and does a good job of, of, of breaking on the football and, and catching it. It's a difficult catch for a middle linebacker, but it's really what you can't do if you're Louisiana Tech. But the drive has not gone well. You had two false starts. You had a screen that didn't go well. And then ultimately, third and forever, the likelihood of picking it up isn't great. That ball's left inside. Because of that, now you give Clemson great field position. From the 32-yard line, Oyunglele with the handoff. It's Shipley going to break free. Across the 10, he's into the end zone for a touchdown. 32 yards. Will Shipley. And punches in six for the Tigers. And that's great complimentary football. Defense comes up with a big turnover to start the half. First play, offense is on the field, and you gash him with a run by Will Shipley, and you see the speed as he just kind of outruns the angle that B.J. Williamson had on him, nearly untouched into the end zone. So another multi-touchdown game for Shipley. Potter on for the point after. So the turnover and lightning speed into points. And that'll make it 20 to 6, Tigers. They wasted no time getting up on the scoreboard again. Defense. The penalty is declined. The try is good. Listen, Clemson, they had a lot to think about during halftime. They said, listen, let's come out and make a stand. They do that with Trotter's interception. And then they punch it in with the Will Shipley run. Clemson looking like the normal Clemson on offense. It's the all new Subway Series menu. 12 irresistible new subs. Like number four, Supreme Meats, Smoky Capicola, Genoa Salami, and Pepperoni. It's the dream team of meats. I still got my uniform. It's Subway's biggest refresh yet. Okay, Jake from State Farm, I really want that person price plan, so here it goes. I like to smell my beard. What? Uh, especially after a good meal. Hey, hey, you don't need to get that personal. The State Farm personal price plan helps you create an affordable price just for you. Mm -hmm. Put the beard down. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Call or click to get a quote today. Take your favorite radio stations, the music you love, and the biggest podcasts in the world wherever you go with the free iHeartRadio app. Download it now. iHeart Podcast is the number one podcast network and is home to the biggest creators in podcasting and your favorite sports podcasts like All the Smoke, Around the NFL, The Dan Patrick Show, and many more. Listen on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you listen to podcasts. 
Sorry I missed your game. It's okay. You see that? That's when I realized it's time to finally do the thing we've been talking about for years. So we're making plans for right now. Start your plan today with a Northwestern Mutual financial advisor and spend your life living. Fubo TV has the most college football you can get without cable. Stream up to four games at once with MultiView. Watch your favorite teams live on all your devices. Try free at FuboTV.com. Hey, feeling good. Like I should. Got the sunshine on my Sunday bed. Well, that young man's had an interesting night, hasn't he? Will Shipley, first Clemson player. To start a season with two or more rushing touchdowns each of the first three games, that's surprising. That is since game tracking began in 1950. Yeah, surprising because we've seen Travis Etienne here, CJ Spiller here, and I think Will Shipley saying, hey, it, it's better to, to hand it to me than ask me to block. You know, he's just, they've liked him since he stepped foot on campus. Seems like he's a little bit stronger than he was a year ago. Does run with good power, but his speed, and then obviously, Pretty excited about touchdown afterwards. Got a nose for the end zone. Let's say. Keeps finding it. Trotter, by the way, with his first career interception. And then the run into the end zone for Shipley. Six rushes, 67 yards. That's scamper at 32 for the score. And a quick start here for the Tigers in the second half. So La Tech trying to answer behind McNeil. They'll rifle that one complete. Slicing it up ahead and across the 50 yard line. That is a bear the tight end who's been his favorite target to this point in the season. Yeah, 27 I, yards. Yeah, I think he's got to get used more there. There's pressure coming off the slot. So McNeil just pulls it and throws it to a bear and then look at his speed. That's why I think he's such a unique player a long touchdown like that against Missouri earlier this year. But. I think it's just great catch and run opportunity for a guy that you know is playing a tight end position kind of that H back tight end you know move tight end a bit. And he's really good in the passing game. Yeah against Missouri a 75 yard reception. He's a former wide receiver runs like it. On the play fake and a nifty catch on the play there. Trey Harris. And the, look, this this is what Louisiana Tech has to do: attack these corners. I mean, that's Jalen Lucas, and he's got no idea where the ball is. True freshman out there against Trey Harris, who's you know a good player for Louisiana Tech. I, this is the area because of the injuries, because of the guys that aren't available. I think when you get one-on-one -on -one opportunities. With Lucas or with Torian Pride, if you if you're Louisiana Tech, you got to take shots at him. So Wiggins, the sophomore on the side, Lucas subbing in for him. Been a tough night at times. Thornton in the backfield now with McNeil, and he'll take the handoff, trying to cut back inside. Takes a pretty good pop, and driven to the near side after a one-yard gain, hard earned. Tyler Venables there with the hit, the son of the Oklahoma. Head coach and personalities from what the Clemson coaches tell us very very much like his dad very much a leader <laughs> a leader a coach on the field it reminds me of Nolan Turner wearing that number 24 with the, the shoulder harness as well and kind of played some Sam linebacker at some point in his career you know, obviously a safety now and they have a lot of guys that, that know football, that get football on this defense. On the 20. McNeil time to rifle it again. This one's going to be intercepted after the tip. Picked up by the Tigers. Picked up by Green. Flags down as the play continues. He takes to that sideline before he is shoved out. A flag is dropped around the 20. That was a return of 30. The tip by Barrett Carter. And Green with the interception. But a flag dropped. After the interception, holding. Interception team number 33. 
10 yard penalty, first down, Clemson. Well, they're such good, you know, speed, athleticism, and awareness. And McNeil is trying to throw this inside slant. They're in double slant. And basically, Carter, just it's his length. He's able to read the quarterback and react. And his length to get his hand up on the football, he does that, it gets tipped, which ultimately ends up leading to the interception. And, you know, Carter was a guy that been involved in a few plays now, obviously the, the fumble that he had, but, you know, he's a natural, they say. You know, the, the game comes easy to him. He just, he's got great instincts. He's got great natural ability as well. And, so, you know, he's a guy, he's a Sam linebacker that can cover the slot. He's unique that way. Makes a great play. Uh, Tiger defense making a statement here early in the second half and have a total of three interceptions. And here's Shipley again. Shipley getting the edge. He's outside. And a big gainer. And a first down. A 36 yard romp. And I think Clemson's has got the opportunity to just wear Louisiana Tech down, especially up front. I mean, Shipley doesn't get touched until he's about three yards past the line of scrimmage. And if he can start finishing runs because he's playing downhill, it's going to be tough for the Bulldogs to hold up. Sophomore from Weddington, North Carolina. And cut loose and another handoff. Trying to get inside. And stopped by Jaden Cole. One yard gain. Second and nine coming up. And if you're Clemson and you're good, look, you're a top five team. Like this is where in games like this, you need to go put teams away. Shipley will step out for a breather here. Phil Maffa, 230 pound back from Loganville, Georgia, will sub in for him. Uyunglele will keep it, tucks and rolls up the middle. And rumbling ahead, and he's going to gain 11 yards and move the sticks. It's just good. It's a well-timed play call by Brandon Streeter. It's it's a pressure off of the right side, and they're running quarterback counter to the left. Just dialed up perfectly with the defensive call that came in. Another first down for Clemson. He wants to go airborne. He wants Engata overthrown. Miles Brooks there on the coverage intended for Joseph Ngata who's getting some action tonight. And the ball thrown his way and I will say Miles Brooks you know was, you know well covered. He's had a pretty good night and I think in some ways you know Ngata who wasn't able to get on top. If anything with the hand fighting. Would have gone against Ngata. The guy has been targeted nine times. Brooks looks very confident like give me some more. Second down 10. DJ will keep again, find some open space right in the middle of the field before he's dragged down. Nine yards on that run. And BJ Williamson with a tackle. And the quarterback run game is a problem for teams that play Clemson. Just because, you know, you're trying to, you know, defend their passing game, which is certainly shown at times it can be really prolific and then you got quarterback power then you've got option then you're dealing with the backs and just something that they do really well third and short Tigers moving it Williams in motion quarterback again will tuck and straight ahead and is he short on that he will be Fourth down and one. I gotta tell you, I mean, it's it's not even fourth and one. It's it's fourth and a millimeter. I thought with where they spotted it, it was actually going to be a first down. And see, to me, this is quarterback under center, especially at his size. Quarterback under center, quarterback sneak. A bit of a high snap. It's going to be Shipley right back into the ball game. Active again for the first down. Will Shipley another big carry? Yeah, I mean, it's just run right at him. It's a nice jump cut right there by Shipley, and then you know, good movement. It's a nice job by Jordan McFadden, the left tackle, of kind of getting enough movement that after that jump cut, Shipley's able to get up the field and. The line of scrimmage right now just being dominated 
by the Clemson offensive line. And Shipley over 100 yards, 104, and two touchdowns. First and 10 for the Tigers. Another handoff for him into the center of the pile. And a one-yard pickup. Last time these two schools met was 2006, and Clemson walked away with a 51 to nothing victory. Tonight at halftime, it was just 13 to 6. That was raising eyebrows. Yeah, listen, even now, look, it's it's a two-score game. You know, it's not like they've they've blown the top off of this, which I think that was the expectation coming in is that Clemson, more talented football team, would, would be able to do that. On second down. DJ to throw again is Mappa takes a crunching hit shy of the 30 yard line. That is one well earned yard stopped by both Grubbs and Brooks. And see now with DJ you know we saw him last time kind of get have some static in the pocket and make a bad decision understand the situation of the game here. It's third and long get an opportunity down the field great if not protect your football team and protect the lead. Uyunglele here on third down and nine. Throws to the near sideline and complete. Adam Randall, the outstanding youngster, with the reception. You get a sense of how much they trust him third down. The bottom of the screen. Look at him sell the go route. Club the guy by. Turnaround ball right there. That's good offensive football. And you can see why. I mean, just look at Randall. Now, one of the things that Dabo was talking about this week is how that kid finishes plays. They expect great things from him. Big Cinco for the end zone, a battle for that, and it's broken up. He wanted Randall. The crowd wanted a penalty, and the stop by R.J. Johnson. Yeah, and R.J. Johnson is probably a little early on Randall. Well, not probably he's definitely early on Randall and the thing that Randall can do that will help is put your foot in the ground and then come back through the contact create the contact it was an excellent job by Randall of winning on the route getting on top La Tech probably gets away with one 12 play here on the drive it's Moffa to the outside and pushed out after a gain of two and stopped by Tyler Grubbs again. Crowd still voicing their displeasure with no penalty. Yeah, look, it should have been called. Dabo knows it, and he's letting the officials know. Look at this nine players with a reception tonight. You got it with three catches, 54 yards, and one spectacular catch in the first half. Third down seven. Similar situation for DJ. Kind of understanding the situation of the game. Time to throw, set up, and a quick hit to get inside the five yard line. A catch made by the tight end, Davis Allen, for 14 That's, yards. Look, this is really good by DJ. Watch what happens. Everybody's walked up in here. They're going to end up dropping out of it and then bringing a pressure from over here. He's not fooled by it. Look at the calm. Goes through his read, is able to find the tight end. That's a nice job by DJ of seeing it. And Mappa will dive into the end zone for a touchdown. From four yards out. And the Tigers roaring here in the third quarter at Death Valley. To me, it's a good example of seeing the growth of the quarterback and how it can impact your offense. You know, you've got. You know, a couple of third downs, you make good decisions on those third downs. It creates an opportunity to extend the drive. And then an offensive line that's taken over this football game, able to create enough of a crease for Phil Moffa. And now a comfort zone very quickly here for the Tigers. 27 to 6. Well, Clemson probably a little bit disappointed with the offense in the first half, but. Coming alive in the second half with the run game. Obviously, the quarterback making good decisions. And now Phil Maffa getting it into the end zone.
no blitz. You said no blitz. Back in the days when I was young, I'm not a kid anymore. Start playing and never stop playing. You get the most from the game when you're having fun. With insurance from auto owners, you can relax knowing we got you covered. That's simple human sense. Ask your independent agent if auto owners make sense for you. I should do this for a living. Subway's dropping 12 new subs for the all-new Subway series menu. The new monster has juicy steak and crispy bacon. But what about the new boss? It looks so good. It makes me hangry. Settle down there, big guy. The new Subway series. What's your pick? Take control of your health by boosting your force field, the immune system. With the Aura Ring, you can listen to your body's signals and raise your defenses. Aura tells you when your temperature is higher than normal, how to improve your sleep, or if your heart rate shows signs of stress, so you can decide to push yourself or to lie low. Live smarter, stronger, healthier with the Aura Ring. Aura. Introducing the all-new one-wheel GT in Pint X. GT, built with more power to crush new terrain. Pint X, twice the range to take on the city. Two new boards to make everywhere epic. Get riding today at onewheel.com. If you're one of the many people struggling financially right now, Bridget's got your back. They'll send you $50 to $250 instantly with no credit check or interest. Download the Bridget app today and get $50 to $250 instantly. Auto owners, insures your car. Because sometimes, something from out of left field Whoa. can literally come from out of left field. That's simple human sense. Ask your independent agent if auto owners make sense for you. Extra Yard for Teachers is an annual back-to-school effort led by College Football Playoff Foundation that brings college sports together to recognize and show appreciation to great teachers across the country and to support Extra Yard for Teachers recognition and resource initiatives. You can follow at CFP Extra Yard or scan the QR code for more. Well, the Tigers taking control of this one now on top 27 to 6, and Tim doing it on the ground. Yeah, just domination up front by the offensive line for Clemson, and that's just created a ton of opportunity for their running backs. Smoke Harris with a fair catch. He'll come out to the 25. And here's a shout out to one special teacher. Hey, what's up? Will Shipley here, Clemson football running back number one. Uh, I've had so many great teachers throughout my academic career, um, but one that I'd like to give a huge shout out to is Miss Walltower, my third grade teacher. Thank you for uh, just pouring into me and, and giving me the foundation to be successful um, in, in academics today. Will, very nicely done. Not to mention on the field here tonight with a couple of touchdowns. And he's had quite a second half. And we're not too far into it. So Parker McNeil trying to bring the Bulldogs back will hang that one up throwing behind his receiver and incomplete he wanted a bear his favorite target. And Fred Davis was there with him. Yeah, it was a good job of Fred Davis a fake wide receiver screen and they tried to fool him. Davis didn't take the bait and did a good job of staying deep and that's why McNeil just tried to back shoulder a bear. Neil came in with five touchdown passes only one interception he's been picked off three times a number of passes have been tipped also at the line. He'll zip that one to Trey Harris. So five. 12 to go here in the third. Let's toss it down to Kelsey. Well, guys, no official word from Clemson, but Sheridan Jones, their cornerback, who we saw go into the locker room early, is on the sidelines without his pads on, so it doesn't look like he'll be returning. As you guys have mentioned, it's just another hit to this Clemson defense that came in without Nate Wiggins or Andrew Makuba, Brian Brzee, and Tyler Davis. There is some good news, though, for Brian Brzee, Tyler Davis, and those guys expected to be back next week. Well, they get right into the hearts of the conference, don't they? And hope to be 3-0 and at the time. And stay on the ground again here. The carry by Crosby will only get one yard before he was met by Phillips. He was met by Phillips. I mean, Phillips who's had a few starts at 
safety position. He's got good experience. I mean, he was playing downhill, and that was a big time collision. Clemson will go to Wake Forest next weekend. Then they will host NC State, who defeated them last year, so the schedule really stiffens. They're going to go for it here on fourth and two. And I think, you know, as you feel like you, you can't stop them, I, I would expect a hard count for sure, although the play clock's running down. Down to two, got it off. Hand off for Crosby, can't get anything going there. They're going to drag him down. Marquise Crosby has been their top back, but tonight they have knocked him around. Yeah, and it's freshman Wade Woodass who's playing downhill, does a good job in the run fit. And again, it's Rook Aurora Roar doing a good job. That Clemson defense coming alive, getting the ball back for that rolling Tigers offense. It's not the truck you drive, or the uniform you wear, the people you inspire, or the sacrifices you make. The greatest part of being a hero is the impact you have every single day. We thank you. Jake from State Farm. I really want that personal price plan. So I'll admit it, I'm a bath bomb guy. Dude, you do not need to get that personal. The State Farm personal price plan simply helps you create an affordable price just for you. For real? Who's ready for their jazz bath? No? <laughs> Who is that guy? Jazz bath? Call or click to get a quote today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Why do nearly one million businesses choose Stamps.com to mail and ship? No more trips to the post office. No more paying full price for postage. And great rates from USPS and UPS. Mail letters, ship packages, anytime, anywhere, for less, a lot less. Get our special TV offer, a four-week trial plus postage and a digital scale. Go to Stamps.com slash TV and never go to the post office again. Do you listen to the TV on high volume or have trouble hearing conversations? Then you would benefit from hearing aids. Don't waste thousands on expensive hearing aids when you can get Nano's revolutionary technology just $347. Don't be fooled by higher priced hearing aids. The CIC Recharge is a true hearing aid, not an amplifier. With rechargeable technology, many customers say is superior to more expensive models. Call now and get not one, but two nano hearing aids for just $347. Plus, we'll add a portable charging dock and ship your order absolutely free. The CIC Recharge has a tiny in-the-ear canal design that is nearly invisible. Why keep missing out on important conversations or waste thousands of dollars? Call and get two CIC Recharge hearing aids for only $347 and free shipping. Call now. 800-721-7089. Again, that's 800-721-7089. Clemson turning those turnovers into points in the second half, and Tim, they're dominating. Yeah, they're dominating performance really on both sides of the ball, and I think it started at the line of scrimmage, but it's also, you know, a couple good players, Barrett Carter in particular, who's kind of stepped up and made some plays. So first and ten for the Tigers. Louis Ungalale with Kobe Pace in the backfield with him. And lining up to throw, and he's got a receiver open. That'll be Collins. And he is in for a touchdown. Bo Collins with the grab. And from 32 yards, Clemson laying it on. La Tech. And Louisiana Tech just falling apart defensively. They fake the, the running back swing screen and the reaction from DJ's pump fake just gets everybody. He essentially had Bo Collins and Antonio Williams wide open down the field. DJ goes with the guy he's probably most comfortable with for the score. 
going back to high school. And catching a touchdown for a fourth consecutive game is Bo Collins. 337 to go here in the third. And they're going to make sure he was in. On that effort on the sideline right over the pylon. As he is tiptoeing right along that line. Looks like a touchdown to me. You know, it's hard to think that this was a 13 6 ball game. Start the half. We're still in the third quarter with a lot of time left. And this stands, which you know, it may. No word yet as they review it. You know, Collins, Collins, he looks convinced he was in. Yeah, and Collins is an interesting one. I feel like we talked enough about the wide receiver. After further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Touchdown. You know, Collins is one of those guys, they, you know, he's just got a good feel with the quarterback, good rapport. They've, they've got good chemistry, and you know, it's probably not surprising that after the turnover on downs, they want to take a shot, and you know, DJ is looking for the former high school teammate who has been really reliable so far for their time together here at Clemson. So BT Potter on for the point after. And Clemson sailing right now as they open it up. 34 to 6, our New York Life Drive recap. Well, it's pretty quick response after the turnover on down. Watch DJ's pump fake. He's going to pump like that, and it's going to get a reaction. And they're going to end up having basically two guys wide open down the field based on that pump and the reaction that that gets. And then at that point, it's choose the most open, I guess. And DJ says, Bo Collins, that's you. Good throw right to his face mask, which allows for the catch and run. DJ, this offense has really come out and responded well this second half. Did you have a favorite guy like that at some point in your career? Like you just knew when you yeah. threw it to him, it's in the end zone. Yeah, I think there is always a guy that whatever, you just read his body language well. Or when you're scrambling, he just reacts to you scrambling well. I think Bo Collins does that for DJ. And I think you need that. And that's why I think as you talk about guys in the wide receiver room stepping up for Clemson, it can start with Bo Collins, but extend to guys like Adam Randall and Antonio Williams. Let's get down to Kelsey. Well, you guys were mentioning that connection. It goes back to their high school days. They played two years together at St. John Bosco High School, won a state championship there. I asked DJ about Bo, and he said, look, he's really consistent. He knows exactly what you're going to get out of him every day. That dates back to high school. Bo talking about DJ said, look, back in the day, Hey, there weren't a lot of guys like him or as big as him who could throw it 70 yards. I'd just run as fast as I could. He'd get it to me, and that's the same thing that we're seeing here. He also talked about seeing DJ play, guys, and the confidence. He said he has never seen him as confident or having as much fun as he has been this season. It is still aren't many guys that big who can throw it that far. I don't care no, what league point. you're playing in. <laughs> It's a very good point, and I do think it's interesting and probably also helpful to have a have a teammate that knows you so well. And as we've talked about some of the adversity DJ's gone through, but also recognize when a guy is playing great and feeling great and being able to kind of ex express that to the football team. And I'm sure that having Bo Collins, you know, playing alongside him has helped DJ quite a bit. Smoke Harris in motion. Clemson's done a really good job on an excellent receiver. Darted to Lewis, who's been his favorite target tonight, but a pretty good hit. Four yard pickup, but Fred Davis there again. You know, Fred Davis is the guy that's going to get, you know, tested quite a bit with some of the injuries they've had in the secondary. Just kind of finds himself now as, his, as the veteran corner of the group. Third down and six here for La Tech. Coming up on three minutes to play in the third. 34 to six. The Tigers with a dominating second half to this point. 
Empty backfield here for McNeil. Looking downfield short again, and that's going to be broken up. Looking for a quick strike, but Barrett Carter in position to bust that up and reach up fourth down. Yeah, and you just see Carter's quickness and instincts playing his own, but look at him jump it, get his hand in there. I think that's what you know the coaches are talking about in terms of you know it's 6'1, 225. You know, and same thing with Trenton Simpson. You talk about guys that hey, a little bit like Isaiah Simmons. You remember his length and speed and his ability to play linebacker but also cover guys. Carter has it. Williams sailing back and bobbles that one as it goes out of bounds. After a 49 yard punt. And Cade Klubnik, the much heralded freshman out of Austin, Texas, will come on to run the offense now for the Tigers. ESPN's top pocket passer, overall number two recruit in the country. And high school, what did he do? Win three state championships that kid never lost practically. And they've had a, a few good quarterbacks come through that program. Obviously, Drew Brees and Nick Foles, and Klubnik, another one in that line. And then. He's had some success, played in the first two games, and he gets quite a response from the home crowd as they announce him in the game. Good a roll and throw, and throwing short here. Got it out to the tight end, running stool, and we'll pick up a first down. So is it kept simple for him at this point? You know, I don't think they're going to keep it simple. I think they want to see kind of how he handles what they do. Look, he's the backup quarterback. DJ had a knee injury a year ago. Look, you need to get him ready. And I think they're excited about his ability, and these snaps are valuable. Going behind the receiver, one of the tight end again. He led Clemson on a terrific 10 play, 66 yard touchdown drive at Georgia Tech in game one. Again, it's Furman, not as much success. Found it a little bit tougher, and he had a couple of what Dabo called freshman moments. Yeah, he certainly did. Nearly had another freshman moment there as that ball was, you know, tipped by Kyrie Morrison and nearly picked off. But a world of talent, 6'2, about 200 pounds, gets it into the flat. And able to get a gainer here, caught by Drew Sweeney for a five yard pickup. A senior who was up on the big board being announced as one of the Tiger players to watch tonight and got a big hand by the giant crowd here at Death Valley 34 to 6 Tigers. Klubnik into the ball game and a whistle. Yeah, all kinds of issues for Louisiana Sorry, Tech. Timeout. Getting lined Louisiana up. Sonny Cumbie had seen enough. It'll be 30 seconds. So we'll keep it right here, third and five. Looking at some of the highlights by Big Cinco here tonight. Now listen, I, I think he's done a nice job managing the offense. We saw some runs early, did a good job with that. A lot of talk about him losing weight and being, more, being a more sudden runner. And then I think he's done a good job in the passing game for the most part, making good decisions. And I think, you know, letting his guys get their hands on the football. I felt like last year, too many times the ball was thrown down the field Dave, it was just a long foul ball, like where no one really had a chance to make a play on it. And you know, I think with the talent that they have here and they're trying to get guys around them to play better, let them touch the football. I think DJ, for the most part, did a nice job of that. And Dabble, obviously, going to continue to coach through, you know, other guys being on the field, which, you know, is good for DJ and everyone else in this program. Louis Ungalale, 16 out of 28 with a touchdown, no interceptions. Klubnik to throw. Darts that one incomplete. He wanted Williams, but a low toss. And incomplete. So the punting unit coming on. When we're talking about the great wide receivers we have seen here at Clemson over the years. They have had 11 receivers drafted by the NFL since 2013. That's the most in the nation. Listen, their run of receivers has been absurd. Sammy Watkins, DeAndre Hopkins, Mike Williams, Hunter Renfro, Amari Rogers for that matter. And you know, I think the challenge has been is that the guys that have come in and kind of look like those players, tall, fast, strong, you know, the Joe Joe, Joseph Ngata. 
Justin Ross, I mean, they just, they haven't produced the way the guys, you know, that, that did here produce. They just, they just haven't. Uh, you were musing about this as we were chatting about exactly that this week, and you said, do you imagine the Clemson wide receiver room has been a little bit competitive over the years? Yeah, I mean, the, and I think that that's what they, they need is somebody to basically say, look, I'm going to take this over. And that's why, you know, we were talking about Bo Collins earlier, why it's important for Bo Collins to be there. Look, maybe he's not the most physically talented or, or the fastest straight ahead, but if he's got the best feel, then great. And as we look at this, 10 players with a reception tonight, it, I think basically what Dabo is saying is, look, you're going to play. If you prove that you can get, get open and catch the football, then you're going to get more and more opportunities. McGill to throw, lost it over the middle, and a tie-up there and a flag down. Yeah, the Clemson fans don't like that at all because they felt they missed one against La Tech earlier in a big way. Fred Davis there step for step out of the secondary. Pass interference. Defense, number two. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. And yeah, listen, their feet get tangled up, but if you see the right hand of Fred Davis, he kind of hooks Julian Lewis, and by doing that, you know, that's what ultimately ends up, you know, getting their feet tangled. Dabo doesn't like it, but, but ultimately, that's the right call. Dabo let this crew know for about five solid minutes even after they scored the touchdown following what looked to be a missed call on pass interference play fake and another one deflected that's happened all night long five times now to Parker McNeil a lot to quarterback well, I mean you don't think Dabo's still calling he didn't like the he didn't like it he's got his hat off he's yelling about the one that they had earlier in the end zone he's not done yet he's gonna swing the hat there it goes I mean he's <laughs> You're right, he, he has worn those guys out. Second down, 10 here for the Bulldogs with a minute 18 to go in the third. And the game has, here in the second half, turned into what we thought it might be on a quick out. He connects with Lewis, but not much there. In fact, nothing stopped by Jalen Phillips, the free safety. We talk about all the players that Clemson is used on the offensive side. All those receivers who have caught a ball tonight over the last five years. Nobody in the Power Five has played more guys per game than Clemson. They often lead the country in that. 2019, they had 76 players a game get in. That's incredible. Listen, not only does it make it easy for us to ID who's in the game, <laughs> but it also is a nice reward for the players that they recruit here, and, and even the walk-ons, which Obviously, Dabble was. McNeil with the strike gets it out there to his tight end, A Bear, and a long, long run after the catch for a big first down. Is that, that's A Bear again. I'm yep. telling you, he's a nice player. He can run, he's got a good feel, and good job of McNeil of finding him. And you see A Bear's speed. Whistle here. That went for 47. Right, time out. Clemson, their, second, their first of the half. It will be 30 seconds. All right, quick time out here for the Tigers. Back to that pass play. Yeah, I mean, it's a good job of managing the pocket because the back gets confused, and Bear was able to work himself through the middle. And I, I really like Bear's run after the catch. And you see Crosby. Crosby's trying to scan across. Nearly blocks McNeil into a sack. Good out of Kelsey. Well, guys, I talked to Griffin A. Bear this week, and he worked really hard this offseason. He's been in this program for a long time, so he knows what they're all about. He said he put in some weight this offseason and just really tried to embrace his role on this offense. He said they were going to come into this game and also embrace the role of the underdog. They weren't going to shy away from the fact that nobody thought that they could come out here and hang with Clemson. So we certainly saw them embrace that role in the first half. We'll see if they're able to respond here in the second. Well, they did. They were only down 13 to 6 at the break. Very different story here in the second half. Final ticks here in the third. And McNeil trying to knock one in. First down and 10. Rifles that one into the flat, but not much there. As the catch was hauled in by Lewis again. 
And that's the end of the third. The Tigers exploding in the third quarter. They were cutting Shipley loose and he was finding the end zone. Big offensive performance. Big part of $65 million in renovations here at Death Valley. Shipley and company have been on attack. That third quarter completely dominating. So getting the fourth quarter underway. And La Tech with Parker McNeil trying to get moving here darted very quickly for a strike and complete to Smoke Harris. It's actually Taj McGee making the catch. And it got to the eight yard line. I think the inability to run the football. I, if I'm Sonny Cumbie, this ball is going in the air just with the way the, the line of scrimmage has been dominated on both sides of the ball by Clemson. Third down for the Bulldogs. Crosby trying to slice inside. Marquise Crosby. Uh, tough sledding for him. Trent Simpson with the stop. Incredibly talented linebacker, but they're going to pick up the first down. Thornton now in a running back spot here along with McGill in the backfield. Uh, and first and goal for the Bulldogs. The senior McNeil. He transferred from Texas Tech out of the shotgun. On the run, it's Thornton trying to get outside. Second and goal. You know, Dave, you mentioned earlier about the defense for Clemson and you know, just, and just the number of guys that, that get played on this defense. But I do think they feel like, you know, guys are in different roles. Even if they've played a bunch of snaps or even if they've, you know, played before, maybe, maybe you're a leader now. You know, maybe you're, you're playing inside linebacker instead of being outside. Or maybe you, you now are a starter at free safety. And I think that, you know, snaps like this and situations like this are helpful. Crosby. Drive at the goal line, churning, churning, and he's going to bowl in for the touchdown. La Tech on the board again. That one from three yards out. Marquise Crosby with a touchdown. And, and probably about the most movement they've had all night in the run game in terms of, you know, pushing people around up front. But it's a good job to see him kind of reach over. I think body on top of maybe K.J. Henry as he's Diving into the end zone and decent response by the Bulldogs. So Barnes with the point after. And we'll drill that. So some life here for La Tech on the scoreboard again. 34 to 13 in the fourth. Watch ACC football all season on ACC Network with Xfinity. Take your favorite radio stations, the music you love, and the biggest podcasts in the world wherever you go with the free iHeartRadio app. Download it now. iHeart Podcast is the number one podcast network and is home to the biggest creators in podcasting and your favorite sports podcasts like All the Smoke, Around the NFL, The Dan Patrick Show, and many more. Listen on the iHeart Radio app or wherever you listen to podcasts. Short corner, Eric McLean, EJ Manuel, and a coach, Coach Mark Rick. I know this place is going to be jumping. Morning, 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 night. It's about to get wild. Here's an important message from the Diabetes Solution Center. 
Diabetics understand all too well the pain of pricking your fingers. But now, by wearing a small remote device called a Continuous Glucose Monitor, or CGM, you can immediately reduce your pain. It's easy to use and helps you make more accurate diabetes treatment decisions. If you are testing your blood sugar four or more times daily, injecting insulin three or more times daily, or using an insulin pump, call the Diabetes Solution Center right now to learn about this groundbreaking new CGM technology. And if you have Medicare, you can get a new CGM at little to no out-of-pocket cost. Shipping is free and we'll even bill your insurance company for you. If you are testing your blood sugar four or more times daily, injecting insulin three or more times daily, or using an insulin pump, call the Diabetes Solution Center right now to learn how you can get your own continuous glucose monitor or CGM at little to no out-of-pocket cost. Hey, two weeks ago at LSU, Florida State blocked the point after kick as time expired, preserving an Oles win. Last night, another big victory for FSU at Louisville. Mike Norvell has the Knowles rolling to 3 and 0. Next week will be under the lights in Tallahassee for BC and FSU at 8 o'clock Eastern right here on ACC Network. Yeah, really exciting start to the season. Mike Norvell has them playing well. Be interesting to see what Jordan Travis status is. Obviously had the, the injury. And but good start for them, and they've always had talent. You know, I think it's just a matter of getting that talent to play like a team and Seems like Norvell has them doing just that. So Cade Klubnik back in there. Are you at all surprised that this might be early in the game? I think for like to totally replace DJ, yes. I mean, I you know we've seen him come in, you know, early in games this season. We've seen him, you know, enter for sure and, and play at the end of a game, but. So most coaches are paranoid. Three score game. I, I would not have been surprised to see DJ at least for another drive. Pace on the rush. Stopped by Grubbs. He'll pick up six. Klubnik, high school All American, Gatorade Texas Player of the Year. His brother Reed was a wide receiver at Yale. Nice to always have someone to throw to in the backyard. Trying to keep this and cut back inside, but that broke down pretty fast thanks to Tyler Grubbs, and he'll gain just a yard. You know, I, I think with with Kate, I mean, he's a, a really talented player. I mean, they've had talented players come through here, and you know, he's kind of the next one in line. And I mean, I just say he's gift, gifted as a thrower. He's a good runner. I think he's tough and competitive, comes from a good program, as, as you, you know, showed before. And, they're excited about him, which I think is why, you know, he's playing as much as he is early in games. Get a roll here on third and three. And he'll scamper out. There is a flag in the backfield. Holding offense number seven. Ten yard penalty. You see third down. It's Kobe Pace, and I don't think he needed to do it because of club next speed. Kind of had already escaped out to the right. And Kobe Pace just with a little too much jersey in his hand. So less than 12 to go here in the fourth. Number five, Clemson up 34-13. Third down and 13 for Klubnik. And a freshman out of Austin, Texas, out of the shotgun. He'll step up, trying to get free, still scampering. Still on the move, crossing to 10, and got the pass away. How about that effort? But he's out. It is incomplete. I mean, just to get that pass away, <laughs> that was fascinating. One of, the, one of the most exciting incomplete pass. Great job of blitz pickup. In fact, Kobe Pace does such a good job that Essentially gets two guys and then Klubnik thinks he's tucking it, pulls it back out. Does make a pretty remarkable throw, an athletic throw, but just runs out of real estate. Would have been good in Canada. Pretty winded. A lot of scampering. So the punt it. Aiden Swanson, junior from Tampa, Florida, got off to a rocky start, but has improved dramatically. 
On the move, smoke has breaking free. And the center of the field is finally going to be dragged down. Nice return of 21 yards to bring up first and 10 for LaTeX 34 13, the Tigers. Since I was little, I wanted to be a part of a team. Come here, buddy. Nice shot. I've played just about every sport there is growing up. My mom's been there for me through every season. We'll get him next time. Mostly to keep me fueled and cheer me on. Thanks, Mom. Love you. Love you, too. It took me a minute, but I finally found what I love. All thanks to her. You're always there for them, and we're always here for you. Food Lion, here for every moment. I'll admit it, I'm a bath bomb guy. Dude, you don't need to get that personal. State Farm Personal Price Plan just helps you create an affordable price. Right, I meant I'm not a bath bomb guy. Call or click to get a quote today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Start playing and never stop playing. You get the most from the game when you're having fun. A big bow box says a lot about a person. Like, they have a mighty hunger, a powerful thirst, and take tailgating very seriously. Game day and beyond, grab a football-ready big bow box. Take control of your health by boosting your force field, the immune system. With the Aura Ring, you can listen to your body's signals and raise your defenses. Aura tells you when your temperature is higher than normal how to improve your sleep, or if your heart rate shows signs of stress, so you can decide to push yourself or to lie low. Live smarter, stronger, healthier with the Aura Ring. Aura. When the details take precedence, the rest falls perfectly into place. We strip away everything but the essential, and what we're left with are thoughtful bedrooms for modern living. Thuma. Brent Venables, of course, left to be the head coach at Oklahoma, but as a defensive coordinator, did great work here. Ten seasons, eight shutouts. There were 28 NFL draft picks, eight selected in the first round, and, of course, a big part of the 2016 and 2018 national championship teams. You know, so, Wes Goodwin taking over. Yeah, and then Venables, you know, coached with so much kind of passion and energy, and Wes Goodwin in a different makeup. Quite a... Where to track Mississippi State student assistant for baseball and softball. That's just, you know, five, from 05 to 08. And so a relatively quick rise to become the defensive coordinator at a place that's got a ton of talent. Garner, some room to operate on the carry. Greg Garner, the senior, picks up five. Mickey Kahn also part as a co-defensive coordinator, but Goodwin's number one, takes the final decisions. Yeah, and you, you know, I think, you know, scheme-wise, they're going to continue to be aggressive defensively. They're going to continue to, uh, you know, to kind of be multiple because of the athleticism they have at linebacker and safety. And I think they're going to have to be with, with some of the young corners they're going to end up playing. McGill throwing again. That one's going to be broken up, incomplete. Intended for Trey Harris, but Pride broke it up. Talk about that second half defense for the Tigers. Uh, well, listen, they've, they've kind of answered the call because they needed to come up with big plays. They did it with Trotter's interception to start the half. Bear Carter's been all over the place, and, and they get a turnover on downs. And they've been playing on the, the opposite side of the line of scrimmage for much of the night. And, I said it earlier, talented at every level of the defense, and they're doing it without, without a lot of guys that are really starters. They sure are. Once again, it's Thornton on a carry. That has been really tough on the ground tonight for La Tech against Clemson. For that carry, Clemson had outrushed them 190 to 18. That defense tonight with a sack, three picks, and a lot of passes interrupted. With about 10 minutes to go and a second time out. They'll take the break as well. Tigers leading it 34 to 13. 
the Sport Clips MVP haircut experience is like nothing else in the world. And now, it's better than ever. It's a perfectly steamed hot towel, infused with our signature scent. A seven point massaging shampoo. And neck and shoulder, Nirvana. Oh yeah. The MVP haircut experience, only at Sport Clips. With insurance from auto owners, you can relax knowing we got you covered. That's simple human sense. Ask your independent agent if auto owners make sense for you. I should do this for a living. The 10th pick is in, the new All-American Club. That's a club I want to join. Let's hear from Simone. Chuck, that's a club I want to join. <laughs> I literally just said that. I like her better than you. The new Subway Series, what's your pick? Why do nearly one million businesses choose Stamps.com to mail and ship? No more trips to the post office. No more paying full price for postage. And great rates from USPS and UPS. Mail letters, ship packages, anytime, anywhere, for less, a lot less. Get our special TV offer, a four week trial plus postage and a digital scale. Go to stamps.com slash TV and never go to the post office again. Auto owners, insures your car. Because sometimes something from out of left field can literally come from out of left field. That's simple human sense. Ask your independent agent if auto owners make sense for you. Hey, feeling good, like I should. Got the sunshine on my Sunday bed. Surrounding this Clemson team. The Wake Forest Demon Deacons take the field. Sam Hartman ranks among the best quarterbacks in the country. Oh, that could be a whole lot of fun. Wake Forest barely survived Liberty today, but a look at that upcoming schedule. So it's Wake and then NC State remembering that NC State knocked them off last year. Yeah, and, you know, and then, you know, after the Boston College game, you're talking about Florida State and then Syracuse, who's an undefeated team right now, certainly getting into the meat of their schedule. McNeil to fire over the middle and complete to the tight end, Bear. The stop by Venables back to that schedule. So, so like, as I said, Florida State, Syracuse, you know, both those teams undefeated. Notre Dame obviously, you know, has slipped on the start, but that, that game is on the road and they're, they're talented. And so look at my, Miami, another team th that's in there. So it's been a good start, but certainly a lot of football left. The deal for the end zone and in there for a touchdown. And a catch made by Trey Harris on the leap from 13 yards. Well, this one's starting to tighten up here. David, it certainly is. I, you know, I'm a little surprised to see Klubnik come in, then stay in. And, you know, now it's a two score game with nine and a half minutes left. You essentially had, you know, you, I mean, you had two drives where you have a true freshman quarterback kind of struggle. Not to say that it's let them back in the game, but it has tightened up. And the point after is good by Barnes to make it 34 to 20 still nine and a half minutes to go. Well it's just a fade out here and it's it's a really good job of holding the stem you know by Harris and I'll tell you you know Torian Pride the, the freshman who's in the game because Sheridan Jones is injury you know he's really wanted to sit on things tonight and it's been easy for Trey Harris to get on top of him. It's exactly what he did. Had one like that earlier that he wasn't able to catch. Is able to reel that one in in the end zone. And well, now we got a 14 point game. And yeah, the question now, Tim, is does DJ come back in the game? I think that he most certainly would have to come back in the game. See him riding the bike. It's been forever since he's been in the game. We're talking about a change in the quarter in, in two drives. And so in real time, the time that he's been out, it probably feels like he's been removed from the game. It's interesting because 
Hunter Johnson the number three quarterback is actually throwing on the sideline a little look, bit. Look, I, I think in, in some ways th there was this feeling that look this we got this the game's over we're putting the freshman in mm -hmm. you know we're going to close this out and because of the struggles once club Nick came in the game you know now you're in a situation where you're telling DJ hey like let's warm up look we're a good shot we're looking at an onside kick sure ton of time to go quite a few people have already you know, left here at Death Valley in fact, I'm telling you what I'd kick it deep and say look your starting quarterback hasn't played football in a while we're, we're gonna play some defense I'm gonna try to pin you back there Mappa back there at the 10 and out it goes and a flag 34 20 five yard line first down that, that's a bad special teams play. You, you got a hands team on the field, and instead of you know trying to kick it out of the end zone, sky kick it or something like that, because they don't have a return on. Kicking it out of bounds is about the worst thing you could have done in that scenario with how Clemson's lined up. Yeah, moves it to the 35. Let's go to Kelsey. Well, you guys are talking about how it's getting close. That's kind of the thing that they're saying here over on the Louisiana Tech sideline as well. These guys coming and saying, hey, look, guys, it's a game now. Get up off the bench and be in it. Mm -hmm. Parker McNeil walking down and high-fiving all of his guys, too. You can see the mood here has definitely shifted as they've gotten this game close in the fourth. Shipley, big hole opening up across the 50. Tripped up as he got across the 40-yard line. And a save by B.J. Williamson preventing a touchdown, 26 yards. Yeah, and listen, this is how you, you essentially loosen it back up again if it's tightened up, is hand the ball to number one and continue to run the football, which is really what they were doing last time we saw D.J. in a quarterback. So young Lele back on the field. For first down, so the A-team back out there. It's Shipley again trying to bounce outside. Before he is dragged out. And he's going to gain eight yards on that run. And brings up second and short. Yeah, look, at him. even with Shipley coming out of the game, Moffitt in, I'd expect to run again. You're pounding the football at him, and you stick with it. Maffa lean back inside not a whole lot there so third down and one for the Tigers Shipley by the way with a career high 139 yards on the ground and two touchdowns you know last time in this scenario you know I thought a quarterback sneak could be in play it's obviously not here expect to run to the left side once again with Maffa. And a whistle. Mm. And a timeout. Sorry, timeout. Louisiana Tech. Their second of the half. 7.52 to go. Talking about Will Shipley, who has been a workhorse once again. Yeah, you know, it's, it was a struggle for him early in this football game and pass protection. You know, he's kind of taking it on the chin, this time on the quarterback draw. And then the second half, Probably said, you know what, Let, let's have him do what he does best and hand him the football, let him run with it. And they've always been excited about his speed since he stepped on campus. I think he is running with a little more balance and power than he did a year ago in fairness. Look, he was replacing a great back in Travis Etienne. And the expectation super high for, for Will Shipley, much like they were with DJ Uyunglele. And he's done a nice job kind of having a better sophomore season than even freshman season. Tigers have found another one. They shouldn't have had, and the guy coaching him up, C.J. Spiller, had a pretty nice career here as well. Third one. Louis Unglele. And here's Mappa bouncing outside. Stiff arm. Yes, he'll pick up a first down. It's a nice, nice read by Maffa. Good patience. That situation to, to see it and be able to bounce outside because it wasn't there originally. That's a big run in a 14-point yeah. game. Ten-yard gain for Phil Maffa, the sophomore. And the Tigers on the move, up 34 to 20. 
Got a little too close for comfort for Dabo and his coaching staff, so he got his number one quarterback back in there. As we approach seven minutes to go here in Death Valley, it'll be Maffa again on the handoff as he's stacked up. No place to run there. Hugh Davis came up with the stop. He does gain two. And second down nine now for Clemson. The Tigers with a win would go to three and oh. And it would be their 36th consecutive game one here at Death Valley. Where they have been extraordinarily tough. Maffa again carrying the load. DJ to loft that one for the corner. That's going to be caught, but was he in? It is a touchdown. It's a great throw by DJ, DJ Uyunglele to Antonio Williams. Antonio Williams comes off the bench and Gets pressed, they throw him the fade. Actually doesn't do a great job of winning on the route necessarily. Doesn't leave much room for his quarterback, but it's a really well-thrown football by DJ. That's a score. Well, they talk about Williams. They say as a knack for the position. Route running, poise, finishing plays. I know you've heard that before about a lot of Clemson receivers, but they are very, very high on the freshman. You know what's interesting? So many players kind of enrolling mid-year, you know, so they're freshmen, but they've, you know, been here since January or whatever it may be. He's a player that came in June, but he, he does have a great feel. He's so smooth. Antonio Williams has got a bright future. The DJ back in control of the offense. And Antonio Williams winning for Big Cinco. Clemson got it wrong. New York Life's product isn't something you can touch or click on. It's 12,000 experts there to guide you through life's biggest moments. This is our product. This is what we do. Start playing and never stop playing. You get the most from the game when you're having fun. What's fast and yummy and comes in a can? It's not what you think. It's bacon? Bacon. And now is your last chance to get one before they're gone. Yummy Can is the mess-free way to make yummy, crispy, healthier bacon right in your microwave. Look, no one likes slaving over a hot pan or the messy cleanup afterward. Yummy Can does all the work for you. Simply place your bacon strips on the specially designed vertical rack. Then pop it in the microwave. In just minutes, you'll be enjoying yummy, crispy bacon. And all that fat, it just pours right out. That's right, you simply place, cook, and pour for healthier bacon without the chore. Other microwave cookers can leave you with a hot mess, but our special splatter-proof design delivers mess-free bacon every time. The secret is the microwave-safe dome that creates heat convection, so your bacon cooks evenly, while the vertical rack keeps the bacon separated and grease collects neatly in the bottom. Quickly prepare a hearty breakfast or create a delicious salad topping. Make lean turkey bacon for a healthy BLT or bacon for your burger. Just pop Yummy Can in the microwave and even when you're in a hurry, you'll be enjoying yummy, crispy, healthier bacon in no time. So why keep making bacon the old fashioned way? Get a Yummy Can today. It makes all this and can be yours for just $19.99. But wait, there's breaking news. Yummy Can bacon is being discontinued. Due to rising costs and supply chain shortages, Yummy Can is shutting down and stopping manufacturing effective immediately. There is a strict limit of four Yummy Cans per order while supplies last. You still have time to get your very own Yummy Can bacon, but you must act fast. Once they're gone, they're gone forever. To order, call 1-800-507-5095 or visit YummyCanBacon.com. That's 1-800-507-5095. Order now. Tigers back on the board. They open it up again, 41 to 20 here in the fourth quarter. Louis Ungalale out for a little bit, comes right back in, leads them to a touchdown. 
and you know, in, in my prep for this game, Dave, I feel like, you know, I've kind of, kind of left some stuff out here, you know, in terms of, you know, Sonny Cumbie, the offense that he's running as we see Louisiana Tech get this ball back as, as Clemson's pulling away. And, and the reason I say that is, you know, Sonny Cumbie, obviously we've documented what type of player he is, but one of his wide receivers, our camera guy, Corey Alberti, they were teammates. I feel like I should have reached out to Corey prior to this game to say, hey, give me a little more offensive philosophy here on Sonny. And uh, pretty cool that they played for the, the San Angelo Stampede Express. And here they were pregame saying, hey, remember me? Hey, and I, I need to, to thank you for this, this finger that I have that you threw a slant to me on that completely <laughs> destroyed a knuckle on my, on my left hand. And so that's pretty cool to, it's pretty cool to see that. And fun to have Corey yeah. every week and fun to have Son Sonny and see that reunion. Sonny land a big hug on Corey there. You know, it's amazing you work the camera with, with his hand mangled like that <laughs> after the wobbler that was thrown to yeah. him. Constant you know, reminder. Say, yeah, just if you, Sonny, I love you, but you know, but I, can't, a lot. I can't completely close my fist. Second and 10 here for La Tech. Now, well, never they've had to tonight. The Tigers have shown up in a big way. The running attack has been essentially non-existent for the Bulldogs in this game. Before that carry, they had all but 23 yards on the ground tonight. And Parker McNeil has shown. Now well, this one's free, and Clemson's going to dive on the football. With under six minutes to go, Kevin Swint, the junior from Georgia, recovering that fumble. And you know, it seems like you know these guys have, have played hard, but there's a confusion up front, and, and McNeil's trying to communicate that. And, and the center obviously gets confused, hears something, snaps the football, and. You know, I've been impressed with kind of the fight and the resolve of this Louisiana Tech group on both sides of the football. That was a mistake that you just can't make, and now, you know, gives Clemson an opportunity with really good field position. Okay, Klubnik back in there, quarterback. From the 12-yard line. And he's going to keep it and try to get an edge out there, and they're going to force him out. On a carry by the quarterback, Jaden Cole, forcing him out. I will say, as we learn more about Club Nick seeing him play, he's got good speed. You know, we've seen Jaden Cole, who's a secondary player, make a few plays tonight, and the fact that Club Nick's able to turn the corner says something about his running ability. Pace going to run with it, spin, and get down close. Stopped by Tyler Grubbs, the preseason all-conference for La Tech. And on the two-yard line, they'll try and knock it in again with five minutes left in this contest. And off for Pace, dancing inside. He'll dive in for the touchdown. A three-yard touchdown run by Kobe Pace. And the running backs have shown up in a big way tonight for the Tigers. Yeah, they, they've run well. Guys up front have, have blocked well. And Sage Ennis, who's in at tight end, did a really nice job of, of working with the left tackle and then coming off of it to get to the second level, which you know, allowed Pace to find his way into the end zone. Potter for the point after. He scored in every game since he took over the job in 2019 and good. To make it 48 to 20, the Tigers. Four fifty-three to go. And be sure to stick around after the game for the ACC Huddle postgame show. Jordan and the crew will have a full recap 
of all of today's ACC football games with highlights, analysis, interviews, and more. ACC Huddle is next immediately following our game here on the ACC Network. You know, there won't be any Mark Rick. Coach Rick not going to be there because his nephew, Max Johnson, getting the start for AM against Miami. I think probably some interesting emotions there, you know, oh, yeah. going against Miami. Max Johnson, his nephew, getting the start. So we'll miss Coach Rick, but obviously out for a good reason. We've seen a lot of smiles on that Clemson sideline. This was a close game at halftime. If you just tuned in from the third quarter on, you've seen a lot of domination from the Clemson Tigers, but it was 13 to 6 Clemson at the break. Dave, I'm glad you said that. And with Louisiana Tech getting the football to start the half, right. I mean, it, it was tight. And I guess, you know, three turnovers in the second half will do that. And Dabo talked about playing complementary football, you know, playing a complete game and playing complementary football. Scoring off of turnovers is part of doing that. And they've done a pretty good job of it in the second half. Sure did. Will Shipley coming up big on the ground. Louis Ungalale had a very solid second half, too. But those turnovers into points and doing it rapid fire a couple of times getting the ball back and it took one play to get into the end zone. McNeil with a handoff here for Crosby. He's going to be stacked up. No place for him to go. And the clock running 440 remaining brings up second down and 14. Talk about all those turnovers. All three second half turnovers by La Tech were converted into touchdowns by the Tigers. Yeah, and that's the complimentary football he's talking about. And I will say this, even, even snaps like this, because of the youth that is playing at corner right now for Clemson, I, I think these are valuable snaps. Look, we're going to see some different people on that defensive line. We'll see some different linebackers. But in the secondary, you know, these are guys with the injuries that, that we may see as starters. Look, Tony and Pride may be a starter. You know, Jaden Lucas, you know, without knowing the, the situation with Sheridan Jones, could be playing meaningful snaps in the meat of their schedule, which we showed just a second ago. Third and 10 for the Bulldogs. McNeil wants to put it in the air again. Here they come. He gets it off, and that one almost picked off. That would have been the fourth interception tonight by the Clemson defense. Now you talk about coaching composure as well, even though it was uncomfortably close at halftime for Clemson. Dabo didn't come out breathing fire when Kelsey talked to him. He was very composed, and even though he didn't like one call in particular, he thought should have been interference. I think he was right about that. That did not go the Tigers' way. A lot has gone their way here in the second half. And a fair catch after a 37-yard kick. Dabo, of course, recently had a 10-year extension approved through 2031, worth $115 million, making him the second highest paid coach in college football per year behind only Nick Saban. Widely reported that should he leave Clemson, the buyout is one and a half times higher. Should he leave for Alabama, his alma mater, than anywhere else? Doing all right in the, the finance department. Uh, you know, one of the other things he said to us, Dave, he said, when you talk about the composure, you know, he mentioned that his, you know, his, his offense lacked maturity. And I think that, you know, responding to adversity, you know, and, and the maturity to deal with the adversity that you face as an offense was part of the challenge that they had, you know, at quarterback, at receiver, at running back for that matter. And they seem to have a lot more of that this year. Well, he's done an incredible job here. And when you walk through campus or drive through campus on the day of the game, on a beautiful day like today, and you know this place is going to be packed and they're going to come running down the hill and they've got the brand new video board, which is really spectacular. I mean, it just resonates big time success. Oh, there's no doubt about it. I mean, you know, we guess we've been here last 
you know, three years or so, and it just seems like the excitement and the buy-in from the fan base is just even better. You know, like sometimes winning can get taken for granted and stale. And maybe with some of the adversity a year ago that feels like it's kind of reinvigorated, you know, the fan base of this program. Hunter Johnson with the handoff to Thomas. And he will rumble ahead for a first down. You're talking about that brand new scoreboard. Look at the open. When Dabo came off the bus with his team, look at this sight. This is incredible. You should have heard it, by the way. The earth was shaking. <laughs> it was amazing. I mean, there aren't many that measure up to that in college football. I don't think there are any that exceed it. That, that, that pose a little bit too felt like it was like a like a WWE entrance <laughs> a little bit. This like, is like this is like the flag is in the ground here. I feel like maybe Pat McAfee showed up in the off season was like, here's what you gotta do. You gotta take your hat off, you gotta touch the rock, and then like boom, stick the pose. Uh, no, that was a beauty. That got him going. This place absolutely exploded. Tigers trying to move it on the ground here. And the final minute of play. And on top, 48 to 20. And a lot of smiles there. Hunter Johnson getting in to run the offense. Third quarterback they've been able to use tonight. Adams, the running back. Inside a minute. He'll take the hand off and trying to spin outside. You know we've talked about Clemson and how they play so many players. I, I love to see these substitutions. I mean you get linemen coming into the game and say hey you get to go in and just the sprint onto the field. Even if you play one or two snaps. But you know you're going to play. You know you're going to play. You know you have a chance to play. And I think because of that, guys play hard. Nice moment here between sure. the two head coaches, Sonny Cumbie and Dabo. 48 to 20 will be the final score here tonight. Tigers really rolling in the third. And as part of a parents weekend. Students rushing out here onto the field. And that is your final score. Clemson 48 and La Tech 20. Third quarter is really where this thing completely changed. Will Shipley right in the middle of that. He had a couple of rushing touchdowns, had a career game actually 